Employment and Human Resource Development, joined with the Committees on Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development and Finance. Maraming salamat po at pinanilakan niyo ang aming invitation para sa pagdinig ng hapon. We have two cluster of bills that we will discuss today. First is the measure seeking to provide protection of freelancers and second, the Magna Carta for workers in the informal economy. Before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the members of the committees, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, and Senator Rafi Tulfo and Senator Bongo, who is uh, with us virtually. With the presence of our colleagues, we now declare the presence of a quorum. Our agenda for today seeks to recognize two important yet often neglected sectors of our society and provide them with the protection they need. For the first part of the hearing, we will discuss the Freelancers Protection Act, the measures filed to seek to ensure the rights of the freelancers and protect them from abuse while nurturing the dynamics and productivity of freelance work. Three bills of this nature were filed, namely Senate Bill Number 45, authored by this representation, Senate Bill 136, authored by Senator Joel Villanueva, and Senate Bill Number 945, authored by Senator Win Gatsalian. The second part of the hearing will be dedicated for the discussion of the Magna Carta for workers in the informal economy. The bills seek to provide labor standards and social protection to the workers in the informal economy. There are four measures pending before the committee, namely Senate Bill Number 42, authored by this representation, Senate Bill Number 96, authored by Senator Sani Angara, Senator, uh, Senate Bill Number 338 by Senator Grace Poe, and Senate Bill Number 359. Senator Joel Villanueva. Both sectors significantly contribute to our economy in terms of income and employment. Especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, these sectors kept our economy afloat and provided subsistence to many families, yet they remain neglected and unprotected. With this, we are hearing these proposed measures. Okay, opening statement. May we know who among our colleagues uh, wants to deliver an opening statement? Senator Francis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I would give way first to uh, Senator Robin, who arrived earlier. Oh, okay. Senator Robin, you have uh, an opening statement. Uh, magandang uh, tanghali po, uh, mahal na uh, tagapangulo, at uh, sa atin pong uh, kasamang, uh, sa ating pong Vice Chairman, uh, Senator Tolentino, at sa lahat po ng ating mga bisita, isang magandang tanghali po po ay uh, bumati lang at makikinig lang muna po. Maraming salamat po, mahal na tagapangulo. Maraming salamat, uh, Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla. Uh, may I uh, request the Committee Secretary to please acknowledge our, uh, Senator Francis, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, kanina po ay habang wala kayo, we had an informal discussion. The reason why I attended likewise this uh, meetings, hearing is because I'm very interested in a measure which I filed Several, several weeks ago, which is germane to what you will discuss. And I hope that the Honorable Committee will also tackle my bill. Uh, it is uh, Senate Bill 1275, entitled Providing Work Benefits and Social Protection to All Delivery pl Platform Riders Working in the Gig Economy. Pinag-usapan namin yung kanina. Ang pagkakaiba po ng bill ngayon at yung bill na final ko, yung bill pong pag-uusapan ngayon, yung bills, there is no employer-employee relationship. The gig economy bill that I filed would require a recognition of an employer-employee relationship. And I'm referring to the riders, those delivering the panda food, those delivering uh, the online Shopee, etc., etc. So uh, perhaps that, that could be tackled. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, that was referred to your committee. We had an informal discussion uh, a while ago with some of the uh, personalities present uh, online oh, it it's it is somewhat related uh, it will crisscross it will cross the boundaries but uh, i defer to the agenda for today uh, mr chairman which i am very supportive of thank you senator francis maybe we can uh, discuss your uh, your bill right now if if uh, this is also germane to Hi, thank you mr chairman what, uh, thank you mr chairman. we are going to uh, discuss right now and uh, before that uh, maybe senator rafi tulfo may to give an opening statement if you wish maraming maraming salamat po 
Um, I just want to express my full support, Paul, my wholehearted support to the passage of the two proposed bills, the Magna Carta of Workers in the Informal Economy and the Freelancers Protection Act. I cannot overemphasize the importance of passing a law that will finally define, protect, and preserve the rights of our brothers and sisters toiling mainly in the streets and under harsh conditions, trying to make ends meet on a daily basis. Ika nga, isang kahig, isang tuka. Nandiyan ang mamang tricycle driver at jeepney driver, si Manong magtataho at fishbowl vendor, si ate na nagtitinda ng biko at bibingka, si lolong na magpapakintab ng sapato sa kyapo at ang mga naanay na titinda ng mainit na lugaw at tinapay. Araw-araw sa loob po ng dalawang dekada, sila ang mga nakakasulubong ko pagpasok sa aking programa. Kadalasan, sila ay nagbebenta ng pagkain at nagpapasigla sa mga libu-libong pumipila sa aking programa. Recognize ang kanilang contribution sa ating ekonomiya. Sana lahat po ng ehensya ng gobyerno ay magtulungan at makipag-coordinate sa pagpasa ng batas na ito. Sa Usaping Freelancers Protection Act naman, sangayon din po ako sa pagpasa ng panukalang batas na ito. Naging freelance journalist at reporter rin po ako. Kaya alam ko kung gaano kahirap ipaglaban ng narapat na kita at binipisyo, lalo na kung walang kasulatan o kontrata na pinirmahan. Minsan, gugulangin ka pa. Kadalasan, tatawaran pagdating sa bayaran. Mahirap na nga, makahanap ng racket, mas mahirap pa sa sumingil. Kaya naman, bilang chair, vice chairman ng Committee on Labor, adikain ko po ng bawat manggagawang Pilipino kasama ng mga kumakayod mula sa ating informal economy ay mabigyan ng tamang pasahod at binipisyo, makilala ang mga karapatan at mabigyan ng access sa basic social services, magkaroon ng edukasyon at trainings at mga pangalagaan din ang kanilang kalusugan, lahat dapat kinikilala, lahat ay dapat pantay-pantay. Mr. Chair, uh, if you will give me just a couple of minutes, if you will allow me, meron lang po sana akong ipapakiusap sa ating uh, uh, Secretary in the Department of Labor if he is there with us or he's with us today. Mr. Chair? Uh, Senator Tulfo, uh, ASEC Leonard Constantine Serrano is uh, representing uh, Secretary Leguesma. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Asik Leonard, uh, magandang uh, tanghali po. Meron lang po akong konting pakiusap. Kasi this is the time of the year, magpapasko po, na kung saan ang ating po mga manggagawa, inaasam, pinapangarap, na sana po sila po ay makatanggap ng kanilang 13-month pay. Ano po yung 13-month pay? Ito po yung uh, dagdag uh, benepisyo para sa kanila, which means meron po sila isang buwang sahod na kanila po magamit pagdating ng Pasko, pambili po na pambili po ng mga laruan ng kanilang anak, damit, ang pang noche buena. Ang nangyayari po kasi, kadalasan po, hindi na bibigay sa mga manggagawa natin ang 13-month pay. Ginugulang po sila, dinudugasan po ng mga employer. So, ang tanong ko po, ASEC, meron na ho ba kayo mga nalatag na problema para this time, maibigay na po talaga sa lahat ng magagawa ang kanilang 13-month pay. Kasi po, time and time again, every year, after December, January hanggang June, ako po, ay binabaha pila-pila po ng mga magagawa dahil hindi po nabigay ang kanilang 13-month pay. Kayo po, this is your first December bilang ASIC dyan sa Dole and this is my first December bilang isa pong senador. Ano po ang pwede ninyong magawa at ako po ay magkipagtulungan sa inyo para this time masiguro na maibigay na po yung 13-month pay sa lahat ng magagawa this December 2022. ASIC, you may now respond. Thank you very much, Chair, for the recognition. Ah, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Ah, Senator Tulfo, opo, uh, uh, na, na dinig po namin ng inyong tugon. On the part of uh, the Department of Labor and Employment po, meron po tayong mga tinatawag na labor advisories in which uh, nakasaad po kung kailan dapat mabayaran ang 13th month pay ng mga manggagawa. Okay, sir, 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 sir can I cut you off? Ayoko pong kumain ng maraming oras ng mga kasama ko colleagues. I'm sure maraming siyang gusto magtanong. Magsasuggest na lang po ako sa inyo, mukhang baguhan mo akata kayo uh, uh, dyan sa Dole. Ganito na lang po, mag-issue po kayo ng warning sa lahat po ng mga employer okay, na there will be dire consequences kapag hindi po naibigay ang 13-month pay on time this year 2022. 
mag, kayo po ay makipag-tie up sa lahat ng LGU, sa mga mayor's office, BPLO kung tawagin, Business Permit and Licensing Office, na kapag uh, yung isang employer mag-renew ng kanyang uh, permit, business permit, kailangan magpakita siyang ebidensya na nakapagbayad po siya ng uh, 13-month pay ng lahat ng kanyang empleyado. Pero to do so, hindi po ma-renew ang kanyang permit. How's that? Um, noted po, send on your uh, suggestions. We'll try to uh, tie up with other agencies. Sa amin po, uh, ang aming magagawa is to ask the employers to implement doon nga po sa ating tinatawag ng mga labor advisories. I remind them and uh, no, sir, you, uh, sorry, suggestion, sir, sir. we'll also warn no, them, no, sir. No, 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 sir. So, no. Yung advisory po yan, baliwala yan sa mga employer. Habang hindi po sila nasasaktan, baliwala sa kanila yan, babaliwala nila kahit nga batas, eh, sinusuway nila. Batas na nga po yung 13 month pay, hindi pala nila sinusunod. Kailangan po makatikim sila ng something para sila po ay talagang gagawa ng aksyon dahil ayaw po nila masaktan. Yun na nga po yung sabi ko, magkipag-MOA po kayo, Memorandum of Agreement with the LGUs, with the BPLOs, para hindi nila pwedeng may, may renew yung kanilang permit hanggat hindi sila pagpakita ng ebidensya na itong December 2022, sila po ay nakapag-comply at nakapagbigyan ng 13-month pay. And then mag-issue po kayo ng warning through the media, ako po ay magkipagtulungan, na itong mangyayari sa inyo kapag hindi po kayo nagbigyan ng 13-month pay this December sa lahat ng magagawa. How's that? I'm just making yeah. a shortcut, sir. I'm going to answer, Asak. As I just would like to interject another question uh, with all due respect to uh, uh, Senator Rafi. Yes, Mr. Chair. Are there any sanctions that are being imposed to those employers who does not uh, pay the 13-month pay to their employees? Are there, are there, do, you have, do you have any experience? Uh, are you asking Asak or are you asking me, uh, Mr. Chair? No, 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 I'm asking Asak. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, thank you, sir. If there are sanctions being imposed by your department with uh, regards to the non-payment of the 13-month pay to the employees. Uh, uh, yes, sir. May penalties po and if they are not uh, able to pay. Uh, and actually, sir, ang kanyang payment ay dapat before the uh, Christmas, sir, before December 25. Meron, na bang ka meron ba kayong kaso na may nagreklamo ba sa inyo na mga empleyado na hindi nagbabayad yung mga, hindi nagbibigay ng 13-month uh, pay yung kanilang mga amo? Um, sir, uh, yes sir, meron po itong mga, uh, ang mga kasong ito ay no. dinudulog po sa NLRC sir. And at no, 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 sorry Mr. Chair, no, don't say that. Huwag mo akong paikutin, Asik. Baguhan ka talaga dyan. Ang NLRC, kapag yung isang empleyado ay umalis na sa kumpanya, pero habang nandiyan sa kumpanya, hawak po ng dola yan. Ba't ka naguhugas kamay? Bakit ka naging punsyo pirato, sir? Mukhang hindi mo ata alam ang sinasabi mo. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Pero you don't know what you're saying. Ang NLRC, kapag wala na po yung empleyado sa kumpanya. So I'm talking about these employees still working with the company, but yet they're not receiving their 13 month pay time and time again every Christmas time. That's why I'm telling you, I'm, I'm directing you to, to, to talk with the LGUs para mag-MOA po kayo nang sa gayon, makipag-tie up kayo para uh, yung mga hindi nagbibigyan ng 13-month pay sa kanilang mga empleyado, mga employer, hindi makapag-renew ng permit, sir. Do not, do, do not use the NLRC, sir. Don't mention that. It just shows na baguhan po kayo dyan. Okay, I've been in this business, Mr. Asek, for more than 20 years, 24 to be exact. Kaya alam na alam ko pang pasikot-sikot Diyan sa Dole at NLRC. Now, yung sinasabi niyo po, ASEC, na meron ng kasuhan, wala pa kayong nakakasuhan because wala kayong ngipin. That's why I'm giving you this suggestion para magkaroon kayo ng ngipin. And what is that ngipin? Ito na nga po. Kapag hindi kayo nakapagbigyan ng 13 month pay sa inyong mga empleyado, hindi, hindi kayo makapag-renew ng inyong permit. Period. To the BPLO. ASEC, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Senator Tulfo. We will do that. Pa. We will coordinate with the other agencies. Uh, if I may uh, respectfully add lang rin, uh, Chair, uh, Sir Chair, uh, ang ito po mga, meron rin po tayong tinatawag ng mga labor inspections. At doon po nakikita kung meron po non-compliance sa pagbayad ng 13-month pay. At sa Dolly's part, ito po yung ating in-implement through no, the inspections. No, sorry, no. Hindi niyo po ginagawa yan. Kasi kung ginagawa niyo po yan, eh sana po wala na po ipila. Uh, dito sa 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 uh, TV5 na kung sa meron kaong action center every year even while we speak meron po nakapila diyan ngayon at hanggang ngayon naabot pa rin 13 month pay don't tell me that maglagay po kayo ng hotline 
Okay? Bukod doon sa sinabi ko magkipag-MOA, kipag-MOA kayo sa mga taga-LGU, maglagay po kayo ng hotline na kapag hindi po naibigay ang 30-month pay nyo honor before December 24, ito yung tatawagan nyo para isumbong namin yan sa uh, BPLO ng LGU kung saan yung inyong, bis, yung inyong kumpanya para ma, ma, ma ipit yung kanilang permit, ang kanilang permit renewal. Uh, Sir Trafi, siguro pwede nyo kong uh, furnish yan ng kopya ng mga... Uh ng mga kumpanya na hindi nagbabayad po ng uh, 13-month pay sa kanilang mga empleyado at ipo-forward po natin sa Department of Labor yes, kung, uh, kung pwede po, Senator Rafi. Kar karamihan po sa kanila kasi nasold ko na po, Mr. Chair. Kung baga nakipag-brush one po ako sa mga taga-dole. In some cases, I'm sorry mga taga-dole, hindi naman po lahat, marami sa inyo mababait pa rin. In some cases, yung 13-month pay na dapat mapunta sa mga empleyado, napupunta ata sa ilang bulsa na mga ilang, hindi naman po lahat. Again, Medyo eh, salbahe. Hmm. Asik, you, you may no respond? Yes, sir, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong mong kahi. Under the administration of uh, Secretary Laguesma, we will make sure that that will not ha happen, uh, Senator Tulfo. Uh, salamat po. What, what sanction, if any, will you, will you impose if there is a non-compliance of the 13-month pay? Will you uh, cancel their permit, revoke their permit, what? So, where is Senator Tulfo? Nawala yata siya. Dito pa po ako, Mr. Chair, sir. Hindi kasi kita nakikita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dito, dito pa ako, Mr. Chair. Mm. Dito pa ako. Please, Mr. Chair. What sanction may or should you impose if there is a non-compliance of the 13-month pay? Uh, Sir Chair, uh, firstly, we'll order them to pay. Kung hindi pa rin po magbabayad, hindi po sila bibigyan ng clearance sa kanilang uh, Certificate of General Labor Standards, sir. Hmm. You better make sure. Yes, sir. Uh, we will do that. Okay. Pero, Mr. Chair, mas matindi po sana yung, yung renewal ng kanilang business permit. Kasi kapag hindi sila nakapag-renew, then hindi sila pwede mag-operate, mapipilitan po sila ipasara ng uh, BPLO. Yun po siguro para sa akin ang pinaka- tamang uh, way na maobliga itong mga kumpanya na hindi nagbibigay ng 13-month pay. Siguro you have to coordinate with the, the, the LGUs. No you have to uh, discuss it with the LGUs, uh, ASEC? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we will do that, sir. Thank you po sa inyong recommendation, Senator Tulfo. Thank you, ASEC. Mr. Chair, thank you so very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Rafi. Before that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Senator Joel Villanueva who is uh, with us virtually. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do you have any opening statements, uh, Senator Joel? Majority I'm Leader? Actually few, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'm actually a few blocks away to the Senate. I will be there in a few minutes. I will do it there, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I came from uh, the ceremonial uh, signing <laughs> of uh, our uh, two bills. Which the uh, Chairman actually authored. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I would like to instruct our Committee Secretary to please acknowledge our resource persons for today. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and the Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, from your left, those who are physically attending are as follows. From the Department of Trade and Industry, Assistant Secretary Dominic Tolentino, Jr., uh, Regional Operations Group, together with uh, Ms. Arlene Forcadilla, the Department Legislative Liaison Officer, and uh, Ms. Faye Avila, Philippine Trade Training Center. From the Department of Information and Communication Technology, Assistant Secretary Jeffrey Alan D. Uh, Assistant Secretary for Upscaling, together with Director Maria Teresa Magno Garcia, and Ms. Yvette Cabrera. From the Civil Service Commission, Attorney Romulo Concha Jr., 24, Office of the Assistant Commissioner for Legal, together with Attorney May Rosary Ann Lumbre, 33, Office of the Assistant Commissioner for Legal. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, Deputy Director General Felicito Umali, uh, who, together with Attorney Clifford Pasqual, Legal Division. And from the Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Ferdino Logi Santiago, Secu Securities Council to Office of the General Counsel. Yeah,
from the Department of Interior and Local Government, Under Secretary Juan Victor Liamas. To your left, uh, to your right, uh, the, uh, uh, we have also the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Assistant Secretary Elaine Salyacuna, Salyacuna, together with Director Maricel Deloria. From the National Economic and Development Authority, Assistant Secretary Reynaldo Cancho, together with Ms. April Mendoza. From the National Anti-Poverty Commission, Mr. Edwin Bustillos. From the Philippine Commission on Women, Director Christine Rosary Muzon Chavez, Executive Director, together with Ms. Josephine Kalim Sasuman. On your, to your center, Mr. Chair, are the officials from the Department of Labor and Employment, Secretary Felipe Agalbo Jr., the Legislative Liaison and Legal Affairs Cluster, together with the Secretary Benedicto Ernesto Bitano Jr., Labor Relations Policy and International Affairs Cluster, Assistant Secretary Leonard Constantin Serrano, the Legislative Liaison and Legal Affairs Cluster. From the Department of Finance, Assistant Secretary Dakila Eltin Napao. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, Mr. Rex Paul Recoter, Senior Manager, Former Formal Sector. From the Home Development Mutual Fund, Attorney Jose Roberto Po, together with Ms. Anila Marie Aliona and Attorney Patricia Villanueva. Those are our resource persons who are physically attending. Those who are virtually attending are as follows. Our resource persons who are virtually attending, when your names are called, please acknowledge. From the Department of Science and Technology, Director Cesar Pedraza. I'm here, sir. Mr. Paul John Serrano. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Samuel John Kahimat. Afternoon, From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, Assistant Commissioner Larry Barcelo. Good afternoon, uh, Your Honors. Attorney Roy Sean Tancinco. Present, Your Honor. From the National Poverty Commission, Attorney Vida Zera Bokar. From the private sector. From the private sector, we have from the United Delivery Riders of the Philippines. Uh, also, Mr. John J. Chan, spokesperson of the United De Delivery Riders of the Philippines. Good Mr. afternoon, Chan. Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Together with Ms. Larson Balijo. From the IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, Executive Director Jeanette Carillo. Ms. Jeanette. Okay, thank you. Grad Philippines, Attorney Georgie Lenzo. Um, good afternoon. And Attorney Vlad Del Rosario. Good afternoon, sir. From Food Panda Philippines. Ms. Rose Romero. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, together with Attorney MD Imperial and Attorney Alexis Aquino. Sir. From Lalabuv, Attorney Joy Canaba. Good afternoon, po. Uh, from the Alliance of Workers in the Informal Economy Sector, or always, Ms. Rosamita Tesiorna, President. From the Magna Carta for the Informal Sector Alliance, Ms. Elizabeth Angshoko. From the Home Net Southeast Asia, Ms. Josephine Ilya Coordinator. Ms. Parilla. From Patamaba, Ms. Lourdes Gula, President. Gandang hapon po sa lahat. 
from the University of the Philippines School of Labor and Industrial Relations, or UP Soler, Assistant Professor Benjamin Velasco. Hapon sa lahat. <clears throat> from the UP College of Social Work and Community Development, uh, Dr. Salunda Pineda of Benino. Gandang hapon po sa lahat. From the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development, Ms. Erin Flores. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. And also from the Department of Labor and Employment, Director Alvin Curada. Good afternoon, po. Director Maria Karina Trevilla. Gandang hapon po sa ating lahat. From the Department of Transportation, Attorney Miguel Yandel Yave. Gandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Attorney Roxanne Bangasan. Good afternoon, po, sir. From the Social Security System, Mr. Carlo Villacorta. Good afternoon, Your Honors, everyone. Good afternoon. Mr. Joseph Desinia. Together with Ms. Chrissy Marion. Good afternoon, Paul. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, Ms. Rebejo Gabula. Good afternoon, sir. Together with Mr. Harmi Mabesa. Good afternoon, sir. From the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, Mr. Butch Guerrero, Governor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Mr. Robert Marunilla, Head for the Legal Services. Good afternoon po sa lahat. From the Centro ng Managkakaisa at Progresibong Manggagawa or Centro, Mr. Joshua Mata, Secretary, Secretary General. Hi, good afternoon po. Uh, together with Arnold, Attorney Arnold De Vera. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. From the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Mr. Mark Christian Bobis Villena. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Together with Mr. Carlos Miguel Oñate. Good afternoon, everyone. From the Philippine Management Association of the Philippines, Ms. Ellen Felido, President. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat, sir. Together with Mr. Efren Alberto. Good afternoon, everybody. It's people management, not Philippine management. Okay. Uh, together with Mr. Juan Miguel De Vera. From the Alliance of Technological Innovators for the Nation, Mr. Manchito Ibrahim. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. And uh, Attorney Georgie Alonso, Legal Counsel, Philippine Movie Producers Association. Good afternoon, everyone. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Comsec. Before that, I would like to acknowledge the former... Uh, Chairman of the Committee on Labor, uh, the Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva, who is with us uh, physically. Okay, let us now proceed with the discussion of the... Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I uh, Joel. just give a very short sure, opening? Sure, sure. Very, very short. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, for that kind words. I've been the chairperson of this committee for uh, six years, but you are the legend of this uh, committee being... Uh, the longest serving senator uh, chairing this uh, committee and you 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 gave me a hard time mr chairman uh, during that time when i assumed this uh, responsibility as the chairperson of uh, this committee to our uh, dear colleagues present here today senator tolentino senator padilla good afternoon to our uh, colleagues present in the uh, 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 online and our guests uh, Dole family, uh, DSWD, NEDA, TESDA, and uh, all magandang uh, hapon po. Mr. Chairman, I, I just have a very, very short uh, opening statement because uh, two of the bills under consideration in today's hearing bills very close to uh, this representation's heart. Senate Bill Number 136, Freelancers Protection Act, and Senate Bill Number 359, or the Magna Carta for Workers in the Informal Economy. We have been fighting for this bill since we became a senator because we recognize that this uh, special class of workers are very vulnerable. I was just talking to Senator Padilla a while ago and we were talking about a lot of complaints coming from, from these vulnerable sectors. Uh, um, 
sa ating labor code ito lang po yata yung uh, tila baga nakalimutan at wala ni, ni isang uh, provision para protektahan ang uh, sektor na ito for the longest time a freelancer is not defined in any of our laws in fact in the philippine statistics authority uh, labor force survey the term freelancer was not specified among the categories of employed individuals however the report categorized them validly as wage and salary workers self-employed with no paid employees employers in own family operated farm or business and unpaid family workers even the department of uh, labor and employment admitted that there is no zero current labor protection accorded to freelancers and self-employed professionals and that the provisions of the labor code do not generally apply to them. The uh, special nature of their engagement makes them prone to abuse and exploitation. Similarly situated, our workers in the informal sector, which our freelancers are a, a part of, remain um, largely not covered by the country's labor laws and regulations. So in simpler terms, the informal economy as a whole has uh, little protection from the law. Kaya naman po uh, muli, sinusulong natin itong uh, paano kalang batas na ito, na ipasa na natin ito noong nakaraang uh, kongreso, nakarating na po sa plenaryo, uh, because, because of lack of time, hindi po naging uh, batas ito. Sinisiguro lang po natin na may sapat na proteksyon ang ating mga freelancers at informal economy workers. So Mr. Chairman, we have... Uh, you have our uh, full support, Mr. Chairman, in pushing for this measure. Hindi po tayo magsasawang isulong ang ating advokasiya. Trabaho ang trabaho natin dito sa Senado. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Majority Floor Leader, for those encouraging uh, words. And before that, I would like to manifest that the bill of Senator Francis Tolentino, Senate Bill Number 1275, an act providing for work benefits and social protection to all delivery platform riders working, in the gig economy is also included in our agenda. Okay, first uh, let, this, uh, let us discuss this uh, piece of legislation, uh, the Freelancers Protection Act. Uh, this uh, piece of legislation is one of the priority measures of this representation. Wala po tayong opisyal na bilang kung ilan ang mga freelance workers sa ating bansa at kung gaano kalaki ang kanilang contribution sa ating ekonomiya. Ngunit hindi may tatanggi na sila ay mahalagang sektor ng ating pamayanan at maraming individual at pamilya ang nagkaroon ng sapat na kita mula sa freelance work. Subalit kaakibat nito ang katotohanan ng hindi sapat ang proteksyon na naibibigay ng pamalaan para sa kanila. The Freelancers Protection Act seeks to give protection of freelance workers without infringing on the dynamics of the industry that fosters productivity and convenience both to the workers and their clients. The Committee on Labor in the 18th Congress, then chaired by our Majority Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva, reported out this bill and sponsored it in plenary. The measure enjoyed the support of majority of the members of this chamber, and we are hoping that the 19th Congress will see the bill being signed into law. For an orderly discussion, we will give our resource persons three minutes each to state into the record their position regarding the measure or make a a presentation and then we will just ask them to submit their detailed position paper to the committee uh, if there are any other if there are other resource persons who wish wishes to uh, give their position with regard to the uh, bill that we are going to uh, discuss now you are free to do so so any any resource persons who wishes to uh, to provide their uh, position with, with regard to this bill. Any? Wala? Yes, uh, you are. Please identify yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Edwin Bustillo Spa from the National Anti-Poverty Commission, formal labor and migrant workers. Uh, with respect po dito sa four bills na na-file na about freelancers, uh, the National Anti-Poverty Commission supports uh, the bill, and we would like to further incorporate uh, uh, the uh, those contractors that are contracting the freelancers should be uh, properly registered uh, at the Department of Labor Employment to ensure that DOLIS inspection power 
uh, is in force. Uh, it is very important because there are numerous rights uh, enumerated in section six of the proposed bills. And, and, and this right should be uh, monitored uh, on how uh, the, the parties, uh, spe specifically the contractors, implements the, the, the law, Mr. Chair. And, and lastly, Mr. Chair, uh, there are some instances po na ang mga freelancers ay nata-terminate uh, ng uh, hindi na ayon sa batas. So if that would be also included in the consideration of this uh, Honorable Committee to uh, consider that uh, uh, the freelancer should only be terminated if, if there uh, if there are just causes, and and no and, and not under the whims and caprices of the uh, contractor, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Do you have any position paper that you can submit before this committee? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we will formally submit our position paper on this, including uh, the one that uh, uh, was mentioned, Senate Bill One Two Seven Five. Oh, the bill of Senator Francis. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, but we are ready to present and already submitted our position paper. It's about the Magna Carta right. of workers in the foreign okay. country. Thank so you. we submit, Mr. Chair, that uh, in the next few days, po, we will furnish the committee secretary All of right. our position paper. Thank you very much. Thank Senator you very Francis, much, Mr. Chair. The Chairman, uh, during our informal discussion before you arrived, I heard Mr. Mr. Edwin Bustillos uh, mentioned something positive about the bill, which was, uh, I, I congratulate, I appreciate the uh, recognition of the good chair that it be part of the today's proceedings. You made the comment uh, kanina. Ano po, pakiulit lang for the record, kasi kanina wala tayo, informal lang tayo. Ano ang masasabi mo pag yung mga uh, members ng gig economy ay bigyan din ng karapatan sang ayon sa ating labor code. May sinabi ka kanina, just for the record. Thank you po, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Senator. Yung binanggit ko po kanina, it's about the uh, essential and uh, uh, importance of the uh, of the riders in the gig economy. Ulitin, ulitin ko po, ito yung nagdi-deliver ng pagkain, nagdi-deliver ng gamot, yes, nagdi-deliver yes, ng madaling yes, araw, umulan at tumaraw. Ano po masasabi niyo doon? Apo, hindi po kasi ma magagawa yung delivery kung hindi po... Uh, sa mga riders na ito. And therefore, yung kanila pang position ay essential to the business of uh, these companies or, or corporations na uh, nagdi-dispatch po ng kanila mga produkto at uh, uh, goods para po sa mga consumers. Therefore po, Mr. Chair, uh, these workers po should be considered regular. Of course, after deliberation with this, uh, uh, with this committee pa. Thank you. Are there any other uh, resource persons who wishes to uh, present their position paper? Yes, ASEC Tolentino. Are you related to Senator Francis? Yes. Oh, really? Senator, I'm Dr. T. Dumadalo ko sa amin sa krami, di ba? Yes, sir. Sige. Hindi pa. Hindi pa. Um... Magandang hapon po, kagalang-galang na chairman, kagalang-galang na karanihin ng committee nito, uh, at sa aking kong kapwa lingkod bayan sa ating pamahalaan. Good afternoon. The Department of Trade and Industry fully support the intention of the bill to protect and improve the welfare of the freelancer and self-employed workers. Given the Given the ever-changing nature of these types of global business landscape brought about by digitalization, the DTI recognized that this type of employment have gained traction or popularity, especially among the new generation workforce. Hence, we believe that creating policies to support the growth and to protect their rights must be put in place to prevent exploitation and labor practice. Mr. Chair, I would like to mention also that we have to give them protection in terms of uh, life insurance because of the workload that they're taking every time they provide their services. 
and I will submit my formal uh, uh, position paper coming from the department because we're trying to consolidate some position from the different region. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. T. Yes, sir. Nice to see you around though. Anybody, anybody else? ASEC uh, Jeffrey? Sir, in behalf of the ICT, we would like to state that we support the bill, um, especially on freelancers. We would like to also note that for quite some time, the DICT, although we are the youngest among the departments here, have been supporting the uh, digital jobs through our G digital jobs PH program. Um, kindly note that in 2020, according to our informal survey, because there is no formal survey with regard to freelancers and digital economy, which we also call the gig economy, there has been a growth of 208% among these workers, contributing to approximately 46 million pesos um, increase in the revenues of 46 million pesos for all these workers here. Um, we believe that the bill will also be able to address most of the pressing challenges which was expressed during our survey. We also have a recent survey of freelancers in the Philippines. And uh, among those na nireklamo po ng mga freelancers are uh, most pro ang pinaka importante is that they are not being recognized. So for example, institutions don't recognize their profession, depriving them of access to certain loans, credit cards, and other opportunities. Um, very expensive upskilling, and we see in the bill that uh, we are being directed along with TESTA and DOLE to provide upskilling. Lack of assurance for consistent income. Um, no benefits given to freelance workers was registered among 73.66% of those surveyed freelancers. Does not qualify for AYUDA because, again, they were not being recognized and because they are not being registered as, uh, as, as, uh, as employed individuals. Also, 39% uh, of them are saying that the transition to become a legitimate business um, is becoming more difficult um, uh, because they, they don't have the enough um, exposure for upskilling, et cetera, et cetera. So again, um, to our honorable senators, uh, Senator Estrada, Senator Villanueva, Senator Padilla, and Senator Tolentino, um, the ICT would be submitting our position paper, and we support the bill on the freelancers uh, to, the, uh, to all those uh, who uh, promised to submit their position paper can we have a timetable for you to submit your respective uh, position papers probably how many weeks or after, uh, our secretary kasi is will be coming back on Thursday so probably mga Monday na sir okay lang <laughs> total na sa naka recess naman kami Dr. T Next week, Mr. Bustillos? Yes, sir. Next week, Bob. Next week, okay. Thank you. Any other resource persons who wishes to uh, uh, provide some inputs with regard to the three bills that has been filed? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Huh? Oh, four, four bills. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Ah. Uh, salamat po, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator uh, Jingoy Estrada, Senators Joel Villanueva, Senator Robin Padilla, Senator Francis Tolitino, at uh, kasama din po ng nasa online uh, po natin si Senator Rafi Tulpo and Senator Christopher Bongo. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at mga kasamaan po namin research person na naririto po ngayon. Uh, sa ngalan po ng aming uh, Director General Danilo P. Cruz, uh, buong uh, suporta po ang aming binibigay dito po sa Ano Kalang Batas, uh, an act providing protection to freelancers and for other purposes. Specifically, with respect to the sections uh, relevant to our uh, agency, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sections 5J uh, with respect to recognizing the right of freelancers to education and skills training, and section 10 po, uh, Mr. Chair, na nagbibigay po ng mandato sa TESDA, kasama po ng ibang uh, ahensya na magbigay ng training and certifications for upskilling and entrepreneurial enhancement of freelancers. Uh, kami po ay uh, susuporta, sumusuporta po dito. Sa kasalukuyan, Mr. Chair, uh, pwede po sigurong mabanggit ang kasalukuyang uh, programa uh, ng uh, ating pong uh, TESDA. More or less 150 online courses, Mr. Chair, 
Pwede pong mag-avail ang atin pong mga freelancers para lalo pong mapaghusay ang kanilang kakayanan sa anumang pong uh, skills or competencies na maaring kailanganin po nila. We have more or less uh, 314, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, qualifications or courses uh, being uh, thought or delivered in our more or less 183 uh, TESDA uh, training uh, institutions, uh, regional and provincial, uh, including uh, uh, training centers and including the uh, TESDA administered schools, yung po yung mga paaralan na inilipat po sa TESDA uh, pursuant to uh, uh, RA 7796 na ibinigay ng uh, DepEd. Ito po ang, uh, uh, ang magiging platforma po natin, uh, Mr. Chair, para po mabuo po namin yung mandato sa Section 10 ng panukalang batas pong ito. Uh, marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Marami salamat, uh, ASIC uh, Mali. Before that, I, I think uh, those virtually present are raising their hands. Uh, National Privacy Commission, the representative of the, the National Privacy Commission, Vida, Vida Bukar. Do you have any questions or do you have any inputs? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, on behalf of the National Privacy Commission, we also support the um, pending legislation on regarding the Freelancers Act. Um, we only wish to submit um, if Section 8 of the um, respective bills could be expanded further as to the right to um, access their own information to include the other rights of the data subject under the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Um, we will submit, uh, okay. we have already submitted a position paper, Your Honor, previously, but we will submit an amended position paper to um, reflect this, these additional comments from our Deputy Privacy Commission and from our um, commissioners as well. But other than that, um, we support the pending legislation to support the freelancers and their um, rights indicated in the legis pending legislation as well. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Vida. When, you, when can you submit your uh, the amended uh, position paper? Next week? Will, yes, next week, Mr. Chair. We will submit our amended position paper. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, from the private sector, I would like to recognize Monchito Ibrahim. Are you still with us? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. At uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat ulit. Uh, uh, we have submitted our position paper, Mr. Chair, but specifically on the Freelancers Protection Act uh, yesterday. And uh, we're going to work on our uh, was this amended position paper to include that of uh, uh, the Magna Carta for informal workers, as well as uh, the bill that was actually uh, was this, uh, authored, or authored by uh, Senator Tolentino. But uh, if I may be allowed, Mr. Chair, I'd like to actually state uh, a synopsis of our position paper. Uh, the Alliance of Tech Innovators for the Nation, or ATIN PH, welcomes the development of this legislation geared to provide protection for freelancers in the Philippines. And we wish to guide the committee in appreciating the nuances of freelance work in various sectors. Hindi ho lahat, hindi ho pare-pareho yung mga freelancers natin at sa gig economy. And platforms and the dynamics of their working arrangements. In line with this, I wish to provide uh, the following uh, was this, uh, 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 highlights of our position paper. Platforms, number one, platforms are not clients. Platforms, platform providers are included as clients in section 4A. And we believe they must be excluded from this definition. Because platforms connect and facilitate interactions between the consumers of services or their clients and the independent freelancers. This is the distinct role of platform providers recognized in Section 4E. Platform providers do not become clients in the process of notifying freelancers of confirmed orders for tasks, services, or work originating from a person or a company, or when they facilitate the transfer of payment between clients and freelancers. While platforms are not clients, we believe there are, they are essential actors for this legislation. There is a space in this legislation to ascribe to a reasonable extent of roles and responsibilities for platforms distinct from those required from clients. Number two, broad references to labor code, international and industry labor standards. We recommend that this legislation specify applicable provisions that would cover freelancers, belatedly clarifying the scope and applicable provision of the labor code in the development of the implementing rules and regulations exposes risks for the misinterpretation and expansion of scope 
beyond those deliberated in the legislative process. Okay. We hope this legislation will not send a negative signal to prospective clients of our local freelancers, from, mostly from abroad, okay, who may end up hiring talent in other countries due to uncertainties in regulations affecting talent acquisition. Ang ayaw natin mangyari dito is ma-disenfranchise ho yung mga local freelancers natin and as of, you know, last uh, was this, uh, 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 estimate natin, umabot na huyan ng mga 3.5 million uh, Filipinos, mostly in the remote areas of the country. Number three, the rights of freelancers. We recommend the merging of rights provided in Section 4 with the contents from the succeeding Section to 17, 7 to 17, elaborating on those rights. For example, Section 6A should already be contained in the provisions of six, Section 7A. We observe that not all rights provided in Section 6 have a supporting section that explains its implementation and allocation of responsibilities. In all rights provided, we believe that the department tasked to oversee compliance, the role and responsibility of clients or platforms, and the avenues for freelancers to access the rights should not be laid, should be laid out rather. We wish to ensure that freelancers know how to access their rights. And finally, Athen.ph wishes to thank the committee for including us in the public hearing. Our goal is to provide meaningful assessment on pending legislations with due consideration on emerging market and technological trends. We wish only to support government, advocacy groups, companies, platforms, and our talented Filipino workforce in navigating the landscape of a burgeoning digital economy, especially the global digital economy. Maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Cheo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Monchito Ibrahim. Uh, I was just informed that you haven't, uh, this committee ha hasn't received the uh, position paper from your group. Uh, we submitted it, uh, I understand, uh, uh, late yesterday afternoon. Uh, I'll double check again, Mr. Chair. Wala daw, sabi ng aming committee secretary. Maybe you can uh, present it uh, or submit it uh, within the week. Okay. Mr. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Babes the Sornia, are you still with us virtually? Yes. Uh, are you raising your hand? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Thank you very much. Ang interest ko po ay doon sa present ni Attorney Tolentino. When I the Senator Tolentino. Sir, sir, yeah. when, she, when he mentioned that uh, yung sa the, there can be an established employer employee re relationship doon sa mga panda yung may mga companies talaga so ito yung napakarahang halaga na sana maisama sa batas na dapat yung employer employer relationship ay may established na para yung mga mga statutory benefits ng 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 gobyerno ng labor code ay maibigay sa kanila so parang ito rin po yung sitwasyon if i'm if i'm ano, allowed to to say, parang ito rin po yung mangyayari doon sa informal economy workers. Actually, doon kung titingnan mo doon sa present kong PowerPoint present, ay pinadala kong PowerPoint presentation, yung number four, ito yung unrecognized employment, unregulated employment. So ito po yung halimbawa na ng mga ganon, which is who are itong itong pinatawag na uh, freelancers. Thank you po. Uh, Ma'am Babes, pwede niyo ba buksan ang camera ninyo? Okay. Ayan. Uh, Senator Francis, may so, want... Uh, Ma'am Babes, at uh, dun sa reaksyon niyo, pero gusto ko lang ipaalam sa inyo, ang maging ang Department of Labor noon pong uh, 2021, uh, July 23, 2021, ay nag-issue po ng Labor Advisory Number 14, kung saan uh, binibigyan din nila na dapat din kilalanin yung mga delivery riders natin to be considered as employees and, and, and to be entitled with uh, minimum benefits under the Labor Code. So salamat po sa pagsuporta nyo, uh, Ma'am Babes. At talagang oh. Babes po kayo. <laughs> Kasi informal economy po sila pag hindi nabigyan ng, ng, ano, ng statutory benefits under the ILO Recommendation 204. Thank you po. Uh, anong group po yung present ninyo, Ma'am Babes? Huh? Anong grupo po? Alliance of presenting? Always po, Alliance of Workers in the Informal Economy. At ah, nagsitin right. po ako sa NAPSI as the policy officer. Napadala ko na po yung PowerPoint presentation about 
uh, well, about salient features of ILO R204. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, if, I may, if I may, loud, Mr. Chairman, just uh, administratively, I would just like to raise uh, that uh, I don't think we'll be able to put in one, 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 one uh, uh, bill in consideration yung freelancer at Magna Carta for informal uh, economy. I think it has to be uh, two separate uh, measures, uh, Mr. Chairman. Number two, let me also put on record that uh, as we have been uh, deliberating for quite some time, none, none, zero, none of our uh, resource persons actually uh, recorded uh, a negative uh, reaction on this particular measure. So I just wanted to put on record that all of us are aware of what is really happening and the importance of uh, these measures. I'd like to thank uh, our uh, guests from uh, the ICT, ASEC, uh, uh, Jeffrey, for uh, mentioning our uh, uh, bill that has become a law, the Digital Workforce Competitiveness Act. It has become a law, but let me also remind you, sir, and the rest of uh, the uh, different agencies of the government, NEDA, DOLE, DICT, DTI, DOST, wala pa yung uh, IRR, so hopefully matapos natin uh, before the required uh, six months uh, uh, from the effectivity. So I just want to put that on record, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, also pound again, Mr. Chairman, yung kawalan ng... Uh, record, kawalan ng database. Uh, parang lahat tayo dito nangangapa. Ilan ba talaga yung freelancers? No? Kanina may binanggit si uh, Mr. Ibrahim na, na numero. And in principle, I almost agree with all of his uh, 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 manifestations. And uh, it's just that uh, I think we, we need to do something about it, no? even as we wait for, for the for the for the for this bill to become a law for example ang PSA uh, yung data natin sa national ID is not even asking yun kung uh, may work ka o wala o yung category of employment so we don't really know kung ilan talaga yung uh, nandito but uh, there was a, uh, a recent report released by GCash and financial firm yung pioneer there are around 1.5 million Filipinos registered in international online platforms for freelancing services. But still, uh, isang bahagi lamang po ito. So we believe that uh, there's more to it because this accounts for roughly 3% of our 49.99 million Filipinos who are members of our uh, labor force. So again, just to keep on pounding the... Uh, idea that this is a very important measure and I thank again our distinguished colleague, our chairperson of the Committee on Labor and Human Resources Development for uh, 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 calling for this hearing despite the fact that all of us are busy with the committee hearings for the budget, for the national budget. And nakuha pa rin natin uh, here itong uh, paano kalang batas na ito. Kaya maraming salamat ulit, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. I'll now proceed with uh, another representative from the private sector, Joshua Mata, representing Centro. Magandang hapon po at maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, express po yung uh, sa inbiha, na inbiha ng Centro, kami po ay fully supportive sa pagpasa ng dalawang batas po na ngayon ay hinihir ng inyong komite. No, uh, tulad po ni... Tulad po na nabanggit kanina, ina-appreciate din po namin na nagkaroon tayo ng hearing ngayon sa, sa gitna ng busy nga kayo no? para sa budget. Kaya maraming salamat po. Um, magpapadala po kami ng position paper namin uh, next week, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Pero let me say that ang tingin namin ay napakahalagang maipasa na itong dalawang bills na to. Particularly, yung, particularly ang interest namin ay yung din sa freelancers. Kasi po talagang napapanahon na po siya. Dahil despite the fact na katulad ng recognition na binigay nyo sa mga, mga food delivery riders natin kanina na napakahalaga ng papel na ginagampanan nila ngayon, uh, sa totoo lang po, napara, napakarami pong pang-abuso ang nangyayari sa kanila. No? Kaya sa tingin namin, yung mga inilista ninyo na mga karapatan doon sa mga panukalang batas para sa, mga, para sa kanila ay importanteng mapatupad. Kaya sa tingin nga namin, maganda kung meron pong penalty clauses pagka ito po ay ginabiolate ng mga ng mga platform no uh, mm -hmm. kaya ganoon ganoon pa man gusto namin sabihin na sana po mapasa ito nang madali at willing po kami mo po sa technical working group para tumulong po in the meantime po uh, sana po mabigyan niyo ng pagkakataon na makapagsalita yung mga 
riders po mismo. Uh, andyan po ngayon yung mga kasama ko sa riders. Uh, andyan po si Janje at yung isang kasama niya. Kung maaari po, maganda marinig po ninyo. Ano talaga yung totoong nangyayari sa kanila ngayon? Na sa aming tingin, malaki ang magagawa ng batas na nakasala ngayon sa pagresulba ng mga problema ang hinaharap nila kung ito ay may papasa natin. Kasama na po dyan yung, yung pag, uh, pag-discriminate sa kanila sa, sa pag-uunyan. Pero hayaan ko po na sila na magsalita. Salamat po, Mr. Chief. Salamat, Joshua. O sige, uh, it, tinggal natin si John J. Pacheco. Mm-hmm. Ang spokesperson ng riders ng sentro. Uh, good afternoon po, mga Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, so ayun po, uh, ako po si John J. Chan from United Delivery Riders of the Philippines. So kami po ay nagpapahayag din po ng aming suporta sa mga sa mga bills na nakapropose ngayon. Um, uh, gusto ko lang din po i-share yung ilang insights pa na dinadanas po ng ating mga delivery rider. In general po ito, nakakasama na po ang lahat ng mga platform. Ako po bilang rider ay... Marami rin po na mga kagaya ko na multi-gig na kung saan, kabilang din po sa iba't ibang mga company, kagaya po ng Food Panda, Grab, and Lalamove. So, ang pinaka-pressing issue po ngayon, Mr. Chair, na hinaharap po ng ating mga delivery riders is yung unfair na wages. So, since kami po ay freelance at uh, wala po kaming nakafix na arawan na sahod, uh, nakadepende po kami sa dami po ng orders o bookings na pumapasok po sa amin. However po, uh, sa kasulukuyan po ay uh, meron po tayong unfair na fair matrix na kung saan uh, napakababa po ng uh, ibinibigay sa mga delivery. Uh, Janjay, just, Janjay, just to educate all of us here, just, just please enlighten us, magkano ang nakukuha ng bawat rider? Ah, uh, okay po. Uh, sa ngayon po, iba-iba po. Ang um, may pinakamataas po is uh, Grab Food po sa NCR na nakasagap na po. Ano, ano ka mo? Grab food, po. Grab food po sa NCR. Uh, okay. Uh, nakakatanggap po sila ng 45 pesos. Pero... A day? Sa, yes po. 45 pesos um, a day? Uh, a day po sir, uh, nakadepende po ito sa dami po ng order. Pero 45 pesos po per delivery ang base fare po. Ng delivery? So nakakain si delivery? In an average, may per delivery ang uh, nagagawa ng isang rider? In average po, naglalaro po ito ng 10 to 20 deliveries. For example, uh, 10 deliveries, ikita ng 450 pesos a day. Uh, gross po siya, Mr. Chair. Yes. So, magkano po binabawas? Uh, mer- bali, yes. meron, may mga operational cost po dahil sa amin po ang ang motor, sa amin po ang gas. gas. Lahat po ng equipments na ginagamit po, eh, kami po ang gumagas. Sa taas ng presyo na gasolina ngayon, wala na matitira sa kanila. Opo. Opo. Isa rin po dito, uh, Mr. Chair, yung pinakamalala po na nangyayari sa mga probinsya po, uh, particularly sa Pampanga, Iloilo, Cagayan de Oro, na kung saan, galing po sa 49 pesos, binaba po sila ngayon ng 28 pesos. 28? Uh, sa grab po ito. Yes po, uh, Mr. Chair. Sa kanila pa ang gasolina, sa kanila po yung sasakyan, yung motorsiklo. Yes po. Uh, yes po, Your Honor. Yun po ang pinaka... Ano, anong reason nila? Ah... Uh, Sa isang panayam po na, na nakuha natin galing po sa Pampanga, ang dinahilan daw po ng admin ng Grab Food doon is nalulugi daw po ang company. Kaya kailangan daw po nila magbaba para po makakaroon makasabay po sa kompetensya. Ba ng miyembro doon sa Pampanga? Sa Pampanga mo, es- estimated po estimate. na 1,500 riders po. Sa Grab pa lang po ito. Ah, wala pa po yung sa food panda. Iba po iba pa yung lalamove, di ba? Yes po. Ah, yes po, Mr. Chair. So, ibig mo sabihin, bukod sa grab, pati rin sa food panda, tsaka sa lalamove, binabaan din. Tama ba ako? Ah, sa food pan sa food panda po, ah, sabay po silang mababa. Pero ang mas malala lang po, Mr. Chair, sa food panda, wala po silang way yung mga riders na mabilang kung paano sila binabayaran. So kung magkano lang po ang sabi ni food panda na bayad sa kanila, yun na po. Ah, may mga reports na dumating ang bayad po sa kanila ay pinakamababa is 15 pesos para sa delivery sa Davao po. Ah, sa NCR, meron po mga 20 plus po sa isang delivery. Kaya napakababa po. <laughs> Ikaw awa naman. 
Wow, ano may mga riders? Ayun po, uh, yun po yung pinakapangunahin na sinusulong po ng United Delivery Riders uh, na magkaroon po ng standard po na fare na kung saan applicable po sa lahat ng apps. Kasi po ang nangyayari po, dahil po sa kompetensya, ang mga riders po ang nagsasuffer po ng pababaan ng presyo. Na sana po, uh, maganda rin po na meron po tayong mga proposed bill na kagaya nito na mapoproteksyon na naman po ang mga benepisyo at sahod na para po sa mga rider. Mm. Okay. Sir. Uh, Senator Francis, Sir, tapos ka na, Joshua, uh, John Jay? Tapos ka na? Uh, Uh, if you will allow me search, meron pa pong mga iilan na lang po na oh, maidadagdag po sana. Oh, Mag-i-brief. Okay. Brief. Uh, isang issue rin po is yung sa if you allow me search here. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Tulong lang, tulong so, lang. isa rin po, uh, bukod po sa fair matrix, ang isa rin pong pressing issue ngayon is yung sa insurance. Ah, uh, Sinasabi po ng mga kumpanya na meron naman daw pong insurance, uh, bagamat sinasabi po nila na meron, in, in reality po ay napakahirap po uh, ma-avail itong mga insurance na ito. At kadalasan, ang unang na lang pong tumutugon sa pangangailangan ng mga kapwa rider ko, eh yung mga kapwa rider na lang din po, nag-aambagan po kami uh, para matulungan. So ito rin po yung isang pressing issue, yung insurance. Pagdating, isa pa po yung sa policy making, uh, ang mga companies po ay uh, nagpo-post ng mga policy na kung saan wala pong uh, binibigay na notice o participation man lang ang mga rider. Uh, sana po na may, may include din po dito sa bill na magkaroon po ng direct participation po sa policy making. And last po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ito po yung issue na ngayon sa pinipigilan po ang pag-uunyon. Indirectly po nakakaranas po ang ating mga kasamahan sa United Delivery Riders ng diskriminasyon na uh, kung saan ay ginigipit po ng mga kumpanya particularly po uh, from personal experience po na dahil hindi naman ito pong ginagawa namin pagbubuo ng asosasyon ay legal naman po sa batas uh, nakakaranas po na hindi po nabibigyan ng mga bookings o nagkakaroon po ng hindi patas na pagbibigay ng trabaho na nagre-resulta po sa kawalan po ng kita ng kapwa riders. Recently po, ah, may mga ginagather po ang United Delivery Riders of the Philippines ng mga information galing po sa Iloilo kasi ito po yung last po na nagkaroon po kami ng event. So, ayun po, ah, maganda rin po na naisama po dito sa mga panukalang batas na ang karap na maisama po na ang karapatan ng mga delivery riders o freelancers na na makapagbuo ng mga asosasyon dahil po sa ngayon po dahil hindi po ito na bibigyan ng linaw eh may mga hangat maari ay pinipigilan po ito ng mga pribadong kumpanya so ma, uh, sa amin po uh, magpapasa po kami ng aming position paper uh, patungkol po dito sa mga proposed bill uh, maraming salamat po Mr. Chair Salamat uh, John Jay uh, Senator Francis Mr. Chair uh, to expedite uh the hearing may, may this representation would like to suggest that the since the good chairman already acknowledged the uh, senate bill 125 as part of the agenda for today's hearing that all resource persons be given copies of this and that they likewise submit their position papers uh because some of them are not aware of what the other person is talking about because i started this just as a uh, open uh, free, free willing discussion while we are waiting for the honorable chairman to arrive so sana mag, mag submit na lang kayo ng position paper with the permission of the yes honorable your chairman. suggestion is well taken salamat uh, po sa pag senate, uh, senate bill 1275 um, i'd like to instruct the comsec to pl please provide copies of the bill of uh, senator francis okay uh, next online is robert maronilio representative of eco Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Yeah, um, in behalf of the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, uh, we subscribe to the spirit and intent of the bill considering that it provides protection to our freelance workers. We understand po that our freelance workers need protection. However, Mr. Chairman, uh, ang concern lang po namin dito ay, um, ay yung definition of freelancers because... Alam po natin that majority of our workers in the Philippines come from the informal sector. Kapag napasa po itong bill na to, 
only the freelancers will be given a lot of benefits. Ang mangyayari po doon, there are certain workers in the informal sector that will not be given the same benefits that will be given to the freelancers. So, ang, ang, baka, ang, ang concern lang po namin dito ay uh, baka maging discriminatory po ang pin kapag may iwan po yung ibang workers that are si uh, similarly situated in the informal economy. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ano ka ba na, Tony Marunilla? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Diti ka sa Juan ka? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Diyan ka pa sa Juan? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm in Green Hills, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Have you submitted your position paper? Um, not yet. I would like to manifest that we will be submitting our position paper by uh, by Monday next week. All right. Thank you, uh, Robert. Mr. Chairman, just a very quick Mr. reaction. John. Just a very quick reaction from our good friend, uh, Attorney uh, Robert Maronilla. And uh, uh, I think it is... Uh, just but uh, uh, proper to really differentiate the uh, definition between self-employed freelancers and informal workers. Because the, uh, the idea here, for example, in the freelancers bill, the idea is to protect them. Because right now, they have zero protection in our labor code. Yes. Hindi natin sila binibigyan, and I would like to put that on record, uh, a VIP Position, Mr. Chairman. So what we wanted is to just uh, give them the opportunity right now na kagaya ng mga nasa formal sector na merong kukulang uh, uh, provision sa ating batas para maprotektahan sila, ay mabigyan lang din sila ng protection. So I think uh, ang, ang magdedetermine nito is how do we differentiate or define itong self-employed, freelancers, informal, and perhaps the uh, our good friend from ECOP and our friends here from the government uh, offices can help us in determining which ones will be covered by the bills we're discussing today at kung nako-cover na noon ng uh, ng ilang batas then uh, hindi na nila kailangan itong uh, informal sector itong freelancers kailangan po nila so just want to put that on record thank you mr chair thank you uh, senator joel the next in line is uh, carlos miguel onyate representing UCP, Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Good afternoon, Your Honors. So we would, in uh, the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, we would like to express its support for these proposed legislative measures. We are grateful for this opportunity to highlight some of our key in-section regulations already encapsulated in our submitted position paper. Our primary concern, once again, is about the potential misclassification of employees as freelancers or independent contractors even if they are performing necessary and regular tasks. In response, we implore the committee to consider uh, the California Assembly Bill 5 ABC test, which stipulates that the worker is considered an employee and not an independent contractor unless the hiring entity satisfies uh, three of the following con conditions. That the worker is free from the control and direction of the employer, that the worker performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business, and that the worker is customarily engaged in an independently established trade, occupation, or business of the same nature as the work performed for the hiring entity. We believe that with this test incorporated to the bills, that we would provide the potential misclass misclassification of employees as freelancers or independent contractors, even if they are doing necessary and regular work. Second, we would also like to include in the provisions for the written contract in, uh, in relation as well to the concern raised by Rider Centro, that the rate of compensation shall not be below the standard minimum rates set by the respective sector or industries association or union, in order that we, we avoid any abuses of uh, bidding down prices. Lastly, we would like to reiterate the need for customized social insurance programs or flexible social security options tailored fit to the nature and needs of workers in the informal economy as well as freelancers. Their typically inconsistent income stream is the principal stumbling back to their active membership in social security institutions. We must understand their nature and we should make the necessary adjustments. I would just like to mention that one welcome development is uh, SSS new contribution payment scheme for farmers, fisher folk, and self-employed, wherein they will be applied, allowed to pay their contributions for any of the last 12 months in the current month. Uh, Ultimately, TUCP asserts that what these workers need is an enabling and secure environment for them to prosper through decent, meaningful work. Once again, thank you very much for this opportunity, Your Honor. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Carlos Sunyate. Since uh, our committee has already received your uh, position paper, which has been submitted before this uh, committee, do you still want to amend your position paper? Uh, the position paper is Facebook. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next in line is uh, Rainier Yebra from the DOTR. Mr. Chair, magandang hapon at salamat po. Uh, Mr. Chair, please allow the Department of Transportation to express its support to your move and the Senate's move to address the needs of our workers. So, lalo na po yung mga freelancers who are not uh, within the purview of the office, uh, typical office setup, and therefore they need more protection. At this point, Mr. Chair, uh, we we hope to submit our position paper so, because we would like to clarify some concerns uh, on the bills relating to relocation of terminals, the changing of routes of PUVs, and the impounding of vehicles. And all of these concerns, Mr. Chairman, are based on the experiences of our LTO and LTFRB. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. Yebra. Sishin Hinawa, can you sa Department of Transportation? Are you a Assistant Secretary, are you USEC? Sa, sa legal po, Mr. Chair, I used to be the USEC for uh, legal affairs during the last administration. And I am uh, I was asked to continue, Mr. Chair. All right. You are the legal officer of the DOTR? Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Yebra. Thank you, po, sir. Uh, are there any other colleagues who wishes to ask questions? I uh, will uh, submit to the wisdom of our uh, chairman. I'm here to support him all the way up to the uh, plenary. Thank, Thank you, uh, Majority Secretary. Uh, although we were not given Miranda by the chairman. That's what that's what I came here for, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that because is not... every time you bring food, matanggal lahat ng uh, lahat ng attention ng mga senador na pupunta sa yos, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just kidding, Mr. Chairman. Parang di ata ako yun. Masang doon may rianda natin. <laughs> anyway, uh, Yusek uh, Bitonio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and the honorable members of the committee. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, ang uh, Department of Labor and Employment po, we welcome itong bill na ito. Uh, dahil nagbubukas po ng uh, opportunity para magkaroon ng malawakang discussion. Hindi lang dito sa freelancers, pero yung mga, yung mga related uh, emerging work arrangements uh, driven by technology, kasama na po dyan yung tinatawag nating gig economy. Uh, talagang kailangan po ito ng masusing uh, uh, pag-aaral at discussion dahil itong mga arrangements na ito ay bago lamang. Uh, um, gusto ko lang pong susugan yung nabanggit ni Senator Villanueva na uh, kinakailangan natin talaga masyarten yung distinction kung ano ang gusto natin i-cover batas, sa batas na ito. Kasi po yung free, freelancers na term ay hindi naman po bago yan. Uh, ang tawag dyan under current laws ay independent contracting. Uh, ang, uh, at uh, at uh, meron, pong, meron pong mga existing laws and regulations na nagko-cover ng independent contracting. Uh, ganun pa man po, merong uh, pagbabago dahil uh, sa mga arrangements na ito, uh, mukhang uh, pumapasok na yung technology. So yung means of doing this, uh, uh, the services that are covered by these arrangements uh, have changed and they are technology driven. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we would like to, uh, we would like to uh, put forward the uh, views of the Department of Labor and Employment on this, especially in the area of clarifying what is the scope of this uh, legislation of this proposed legislation it is very very important mr chairman because on the one hand while the department of labor and employment is uh, primarily concerned with situations where an employer employee relationship exists uh, in the case of uh, 
independent contracting, uh, the regulatory uh, uh, structure of the Department of Labor and, and Employment does not apply. Uh, we cannot, we, uh, the, the, uh, the Department of Labor and Employment uh, cannot be used, uh, for instance, to enforce rights arising from independent contracts or from contracts covered by independent contracting arrangements. Uh, meron lang kaming concern dito po, Mr. Chairman, uh, dahil dito sa uh, panukalang batas na ito, maraming assignment ang ibinibigay sa Department of Labor and Employment. At alam natin po lahat yan na kung maraming assignment, nangangailangan ng uh, tao na nakadedicate dito sa assignment na ito para magampanan at ma-implement ng tama yung batas. Uh, so kung ano man, uh, parang ang nakikita namin po dito ay uh, ang... Uh, may expand yung jurisdiction ng Department of Labor and Employment at papakialaman na rin siya niya yung pag-e-enforce, uh, pag, uh, pag, uh, at pag-a-adjudicate ng claims arising from independent contracting arrangements. Wala po yan sa current system. At kung ito po ang mangyayari, ang Department of Labor and Employment po ay hindi handa hindi handa yung administrative structure ng Department of Labor and Employment po dito. Uh, siguro po ang pwede lang may offer ng Department of Labor and Employment sa ngayon sa mga sitwasyon na hindi covered ng employer-employee relationship ay yung uh, aming uh, conciliation and mediation facilities. Nag-agree yung parties na mag-submit dito sa conciliation and mediation facilities. Pero kung wala pong settlement doon, uh, hindi ito pwedeng iakyat sa uh, adjudicatory powers ng Secretary of Labor at hindi rin po ipa pwedeng ipasa sa National Labor Relations Commission. So ang uh, nakikita po namin dito na, ano, na, na uh, kinakailangan tugunan dito sa uh, mga freelancers na ito ay unang-una uh, kung nagkaroon ba ng dispute itong arrangements na ito sila tatakbo. Pangalawa, ito bang mga arrangements na ito ay covered ng social protection legislation? Uh, doon, sa, doon po sa una, uh, maniwanag po na in the absence of a clear jurisdictional power vested in the Department of Labor and Employment, then the remedy will have to be the courts. Uh, on the other hand, doon sa pangalawa, yung social legislation covered naman po ang independent contractors dyan uh, sa social legislation natin uh, kung gusto nilang magmiembro as voluntary members of the SSS. Uh, having said those, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I also uh, make some observations on the specific provisions of the bill? Uh, Number one, dun sa nabanggit ko na po yung kinakailangan po natin na liwanagin ano yung coverage ng, 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 ng uh, batas na ito. Uh, pangalawa, dito sa definition po ng or sa enumeration ng rights ng uh, freelancers, uh, section 6. Uh, kung titignan po natin, lahat ng, lahat ng rights na ito ay Generally, rights po ng mga gagawa. Whether they are freelancers or workers under an employer-employer employer relationship. Wala po distinction yan. Ang pinapagkaiba lang po, magkakaroon ng diferensya lamang kung una, merong employer-employer relationship. Kung on the other hand naman, independent contracting ang arrangement. Pangalawa, uh, na, uh, na point of distinction, saan sektor yung gagawa? Uh, nasa private sector ba ito o nasa, na, nasa public sector? Pangatlo, yung location po ng, uh, ng performance ng trabaho. Uh, nakikita po natin dito na hindi lang uh, within Philippine jurisdiction ang kinocover nitong batas na ito. Uh, uh, pwede din yung kakontrata ng, ano, ng, uh, ng uh, freelancer, kung gamitin natin yung term na yan, ay nasa labas ng bansa. And immediately, we will have some issues uh, regarding the enforcement of contractual arrangements beyond the jurisdiction of the, beyond the 
territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines. Uh, ay nababanggit po dito na para maprotektahan yung mga karapatan ng mga freelancers and other workers to be covered by this bill, the uh, government or the state is going to pursue bilateral arrangements with other countries. Uh, it is not clear, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, who is the agency that is going to do this. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, but, but however, I, I, I would just like to point out, Mr. Chairman, how uh, the, the, the potential and practical difficulties that one might encounter in pursuing bilateral arrangements of this nature. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, to cite an extreme example, in the case of federal states like the United States, these states there, you have 50 states there, and they have different state laws. Their labor laws are different from each other, depending on the state. The state of California was mentioned by one of the resource speakers, but the, the laws, the labor laws in the state of California are different from the labor laws in the state of New York. So uh, the, 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 uh, the, those are the practical difficulties that uh, one might encounter uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, in pursuing bilateral arrangements. But uh, uh, those, those are some of the thoughts right. that, that uh, we can share yeah. with you at this point, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Yusek. Senator Francis. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the job here of Dole is to help the committee finalize the contentious points coming out of the proposed bills. And not to lecture on us <laughs> that it is difficult. <laughs> Sinabi nyo, uh, Mahirapan kayo. How, how would you convert your seemingly unpreparedness status right now to preparedness? That's why we're crafting a bill. And don't, don't cite uh, American laws, the, the blah, blah, blah. I'm also a lawyer in New York. Hindi na pinag-uusapan yan. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, pa, para natin matutulungan yung manggagawa natin na walang employer-employee relationship na nakalagay sa saligang batas Baho ng Estado, nabigyan proteksyon ng manggagawa. Hindi yung iiwas tayo. Hindi namin kaya to Paano natin bilateral relations? Help us craft this bill. Help us fine-tune these pieces of legislation. Enable, enable our workers benefit from social legislation that can be provided by the state and Congress. So, huwag natin sabihin, ay, mahirap nga gawin to. Paano natin gagawin? Eh, parang umayaw na tayo rito, sir. Ang trabaho natin, pagandahin ito, ayusin to para sa mga manggagawa, hindi yung para umiwas tayo na hindi natin kayang ipatupad dito. Nasa ibang bansa, meron na tayong Department of Migrant Workers, meron tayong mga polo, Department of Foreign Affairs ang pumapasok sa bilateral relations. Eh, bakit natin, sina parang sinabi niyo sa amin, huwag na natin ituloy ito at napakahirap dito. Huwag po ganun, sir. Wag po ganun, sir. Uh, napakasakit pakinggan yung ganun. Kami, kahit nakabakasyon, nagtatrabaho rin kami dito. Si chairman, pinag, pinag, uh, pinagpupuyatan din ito. Pero pagsabihin natin na hindi natin kayang ipatupad ito at gawin, eh, muwi na tayo. Par parang mali ho yun. Uh, hindi ho yun ang sinumpaan tungkulin nating lahat dito. Uh, salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. May I say, Mr. Chairman? For that, uh, Senator Joel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I commiserate and uh, share the sentiments of our dear colleague, Senator Francis Tolentino. This is the problem, Mr. Chairman. Pag uh, simula pa lang, ayaw na natin or nagko-complaint na tayo na trabaho na naman, hindi mo maganda yung dating. Kasi when you start thinking about the laws of different states of the United States, we don't, we don't care about it. We care about our people. We are here to protect for uh, workers, we are all in agreement that at this point in time, there is no, nothing, nothing in the provision of the labor code, nothing with regard to, when you talk about our laws, zero protection for our freelancers, for the informal economy, and that's what we are talking about. And just for the record, Mr. Chairman, when we passed the Occupational Safety and Health Standards, Dole came to us and said, we don't have inspectors. This representation introduced an amendment, 200 plus million pesos for our inspectors, and uh, we provided inspectors for Dole. And uh, perhaps 
uh, let's let's be extra careful in uh, making statements na parang mahirap itong trabaho eh, wala namang madaling trabaho especially to uh, help our uh, our people for example Mr. Chairman no? itong section 6 itong rights uh, of uh, freelancers babalikan ko lang Mr. Chairman just to to uh, uh found my point here Mr. Chairman this was written and part of the bill because I am not supposed to ask questions anymore, Mr. Chairman, but let me ask this question to the Department of Labor and Employment. What have you been doing the complaints being filed by our freelancers on the conditions of their employment? What are you doing? How do you handle these complaints? Considering that freelance work is primarily governed by uh, the civil service, uh, by, 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 by civil code. Do you have a system of assistance to guide them to guide our freelancers on the proper recourse and uh, to educate them of their rights. Ayun, mga narinig natin kanina, hindi nila alam. Saan sila pupunta? Anong gagawin nila? So this is the deep answer to the uh, problems that we are facing. But right now, sige, pag-usapan natin. Gusto nyo pag-usapan natin. Ano yung ginagawa nyo? Uh, Isa-isahin natin lahat ng sektor. If that's what you want, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm willing to stay here until the wee hours of the morning and We'll ask questions. How are you taking care of our freelancers? Yung isang photographer na kumuha ng uh, pictures dun sa isang kasal, biglang hindi siya binayaran, anong gagagawa nyo? Sa amin pumupunta para humingi ng tulong. Anong batas meron tayo? Wala. So this is the reason why we're, 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 we're spending time, quality time, to help them, protect them. So punta tayo sa ibang uh, dako. Yung mga riders, biglang umorder, hindi binayaran. Ang gagawin natin? E mismo sa PSA natin, hindi naka-record kung sino freelancer. Yung isa sa atin dito, wala makapagsabi. Ilan talaga yung freelancers dito? Eh. Ilan din sa informal economy? Wala makapagsabi. Eh. Sabihin natin, ah, hindi, mahirap tong trabaho na to. Baka hindi natin kaya to. Eh, mahirap po yun. Parang baliwala na lang tayo. Bolis na lang natin lahat sarili natin. Pagkaganon, Mr. Chair. In fact, you never submitted any position paper before this committee with regard to this uh, bill that we are uh, discussing right now. Komsek, is there any other... Did they submit any position paper? Dudole? Wala. So I, I don't think... Uh, uh, may I, Mr. Chairman? Are you interested? No, Mr. Chairman, with my apologies to the good senators... Uh, 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 Chairman, the, yung iba nag-submit na ng position paper, si, yung, yung kumokontra, wala pa lang position paper. Chairman, if I may, uh, with the permission of the members of the, again, we express our apologies for for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, for whatever, for, for whatever, uh, uh, for whatever, uh, uh, undue, undue, uh, uh, statements that we may we may have made uh, we manifest mr chairman that we are going to submit formally our position paper but as i preface my statement earlier uh, the uh, we welcome the uh, we welcome the uh, filing of this bill because it opens a whole new avenue of uh, discussion uh, the intention of the department of labor and employment in pointing out this uh, the matters that we have uh, earlier stated was really to put forward the discussion points uh, that uh, uh, we feel ought to be further uh, explored in relation to the the uh, the drafting a bill that uh, is going to be responsive to the needs of not only of freelancers but as I've said earlier to the uh, needs of the of uh, of the workers in the emerging economy uh, who are involved in in. Uh, uh, emerging work arrangements, particularly the uh, technologically driven uh, work this is, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Honorable Mr. Chairman, Senators. I think, I think uh, uh, the problem arose from the non-submission of Dole, of its position paper, and the expression of personal opinions coming from the representative of Dole. You separate your personal biases and opinions vis-a-vis uh, -vis the official position of your mother department, which may be contrary to your personal opinion. 
It is not the opinion of the entire Dole family. I am very sure of that. Uh, we have hardworking uh, other personnel of the Department of Labor willing to accept additional duties for the sake of our workers and not abstain or refrain from uh, having additional functions. So paghiwalayin mo yung personal opinion mo at yung opinion ng Dole. Maybe we can ask him if that was his personal opinion or not. Uh, no, no, Mr. Chairman, the, the, uh, we came here after due discussions within the Department of Labor. So then, then let me ask this question, Mr. Chairman. That was your personal opinion? No, Mr. Chairman. We, came, uh, we, we have a committee in the Department of Labor and Employment. Uh, we call it the Technical Committee of, on Legislative No, the process. statements that you just made earlier, was that your personal opinion no. or is that the opinion of the uh, department? And that is the department's position, Mr. Chairman. Uh, position taken? Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, and 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 we we manifest that uh, if we may be given a chance to submit uh, the formal position paper. So as far as I understand, you are not in favor of this bill. Am I correct? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, as I've stated earlier, this is a very good opportunity for us to clarify certain issues about the uh, workers or uh, those workers who are involved in the emerging world, world of work. Uh, we know that there are many, there are, there are many problems encountered, including, including how they enforce uh, their rights arising from contracts, including their access to labor dispute res resolution mechanisms, and also including their access to social Sinabi protection mo, Marina, mechanisms. Ang departamento nyo, hindi kayo handa, kung ano-ano sinasabi ninyo. So, Katulad nga na sinabi ni Senator Francis na nandito tayo para tulungan kami, tulungan ta magtulungan tayo para protect protektahan itong ating mga freelance workers. May tulungan niya naman kami. Hindi, yes, sir. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly, we are not yun. We are not yun. Yung aming uh, mga ginagawa dito. We are not yun. This uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, pakilam namin is mga, bata, mga labor laws uh, sa California, mga labor laws sa New York. Ano pakilam uh, namin doon? Nandito tayo sa Pilipinas. Ang sundan natin, ang mga batas ng labor laws dito sa Pilipinas, wala tayo pakilam sa mga batas ng ibang bansa. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I mentioned that because one of the resource speakers mentioned uh, a California law and uh, that was also in relation to... Uh, uh, the matter of entering into bilateral arrangements with other countries. But it's beside the your no, jurisdiction as DOLE. Yeah. We have Department of Migrant Workers. We even have Migrant Workers Office in every embassy. So why would you talk about something that is outside your jurisdiction? Even DMW is no longer part of DOLE. May, may I know, uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may I ask you, uh, Yusek, what is this uh, committee that we are in? This is the Committee on Labor and Employment. Committee on Labor, and we're tackling these very important measures. Yes. And the Department of Labor and Employment has no position paper? How is that, Mr. Chairman? I don't committee to kung ganun. Uh, I was just, I, I myself am surprised because uh, the committee secretary just informed me that there was no position paper submitted by uh, this department. What are they doing? They're not preparing? They come here to the Senate? Unprepared, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. And Chairman, this has not accepted. This has been this has been passed during the last Congress uh, through the efforts of uh, our majority floor leader. Mr. Did they pos did, did you submit a position paper during the last Congress? Uh, definitely, definitely, Mr. Chairman. Yes. yes. Do you want to put that in record? Here in the uh, here in this uh, committee, submit uh, or do you want to position? submit another position paper? A different position Chairman. paper. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, in order to uh, to uh, put uh, put on record and uh, formalize the uh, the points that uh, we have raised uh, earlier, uh, just to just to if I may if I may be allowed, Mr. Chairman, uh, just to. Uh, uh, to clarify, I raised those points, or uh, the Department of Labor and Employment raised those points in order, uh, with the view, with the view of uh, inviting and providing inputs to the committee on what might be the points that need to be clarified in crafting a legislation that is responsive to the to the uh, to the uh, uh, matter that uh, we are trying to uh, address, Mr. Chairman. 
We will give you one week to submit your the position paper of the department. Yes, Mr. Chairman. We will do that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to put on record, Mr. Chairman, that if you look at the Department of Labor statement, the Department of Labor and Employment admitted that there is no current labor protection accorded to freelancers and self-employed professionals and that the provisions of the labor code do not generally apply to them. And that's why these measures that we are deliberating upon is very important, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. So I so want to put that on record, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Joel. Senator Robinod. Uh, maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Uh, siguro para medyo lumamig-lamig ang hangin, ibahin ko muna yung topic. Uh, pasensya na ako kayo kung uh, nag-react ang mga mahal niyong senador sapagkat uh, nabigla din po kami sa mga sinabi niyo po. Pasensya na po kayo kung kami nag-react. Uh, katunayan, yung mga binanggit niyo po, Nandun po yun sa mga panukalang batas, katulad po noong uh, right to a written contract or agreement, right to just compensation, and equal revenue. Nandito po lahat, nandiyan po sa panukalang batas. Opo. Ngayon, uh, igaganon ko muna po, para lumamig. Uh, medyo painamin ko muna po ng tubig si <laughs> Senator Tolentino na ay blood yung boss ko eh, boss. <laughs> Mamula po ako. Kasi po kami po mismo Ang asawa ko po ay uh, may online business Meron din po kaming mga delivery boys Tatanong ko lang po sana Kasi napakahalaga po sa amin Yung internet connection Ito po para po siguro kay Asik Jeffrey Ian D Yan Ang problema po namin, yung aming internet, kaya ano pa ang ipalagay namin, sasabihin nila, ito pinakamabilis, di pupunta kami doon. Tapos sasabihin, ito ngayon ang pinakamabilis, doon naman kami. Pero parang wala din. Parang mahina pa rin po, may araw na hindi mo magamit, may araw na. Kailan po ba lalakas ang internet natin? Ito po, ito, may, merong sinasabi na nagkaroon na tayo ng bagong batas na nagsasabi na pwede na tayong pumasok ang uh, foreign investor dito para maglagay ng malakas na internet. Pero ano po ba kagayan ng ating internet dito sa Pilipinas? Kasi nakasalal nakasalalay pa rin po ang trabaho niya na yung pinag-uusapan natin, nakasalalay pa rin po diyan. Yung mga riders natin para lumakas ang kita niyan, dapat maganda internet. <laughs> eh, siyempre po, pag pinag-usapan natin ang gusto natin magkaroon sila ng tamang karapatan, tamang sweldo, tamang lahat, dapat kumikita yung employer. Thank you. Ang tanong po, meron po bang pag-asa ng ating internet ay lumakas? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may respond. Please proceed. Thank you for uh, thank you for the question, uh, Senator uh, Padilla. Um, although we don't have a uh, let, let us uh, check for the specific time timeline. Pero ang sagot ko sa inyo may pag-asa naman, Senator. It's a uh, our free Wi-Fi and national broadband plan has a five year. We are writing it now because bago yung administration. Pero meron kami. A five-year plan to increase the the bandwidth. In fact, uh, according to the recent surveys conducted by the International Telecommunications Union, umakit na naman po yung ating uh, average bandwidth na pinuprovide ng ating internet service providers. Uh, then again, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga issues pagdating sa pagdatayo ng mga bagong uh, cell sites dahil uh, marami rin tumututol sa ating mga private uh, landowners, ayaw, lalo na sa loob ng mga subdivision. I understand that NTC, which is a uh, which is an attached agency of DICT has a proposed legislation regarding that matter. Um, so, para ma-resolve po itong mga issues na ito. With regard to naman po sa satellite, um, in fact, ito pong uh, Starlink, ang uh, kanyang operational, uh, meron na po siya ngayong parang provisional franchise, ang kanyang operationalization is sometime mid-2023. Mr. Chairman, sino po ito? Ito po ba yung kay Tesla? Yun ba yun? Yun ba yun? Yes po. Uh, yes, po. Ah, nandito na po sila. Yes po. Aba. 
So, ito ah. So, we are hoping that uh, kasi ang kanilang operational, operationalization plan is mid-2023. So, hopefully, if, we, if they can, if they can roll out uh, their infrastructure, then magkakaroon tayo ng wider, wider na coverage. At the same time, uh, additional competitors for our internet service providers. They said that uh, per point, ang kaya na lang i-provide is 100 Mbps. Uh, I'm sorry, 100 Gbps. So it's a little bit better than what we have po, uh, Senator Padil. Sana po maging ano na po yan kasi madalas ko nang madinig yun eh. Ako, 100 na po kayo ngayon. Meron pang testing-testing yun eh. Oh, ang galing. Pero pagkaralan dalawang araw, boss, wala na. Oh, talagang gano'n. Siguro, sir. What we can... Di ba? Meron pa ngayong app? Yes. Uh, ano mo yung lakas mo? So, siguro, uh, we can also submit a... I, I think the DICT already submitted in the past a legislation. But what we can do is re-submit a new proposed legislation. Karamihan po kasi sa mga kanilang ina-advertise ay yung tinatawag na app or burst speed. Baka po pwede siguro na i-propose din namin sa Congress na ang kanilang, ang, ang kanilang i-advertise ay hindi yung burst speed kung hindi yung tinatawag na committed information rate, which is your minimum. Kasi madalas kasi po, uh, false advertising, eh, sasabihin nila uh, up to. Pero actually, yung committed information rate is only one-fourth of that up to. Okay, Chairman. Chairman, mahal na kami. Mukhang babagsak sa committee ko in information to. Meron daw false information na ginagawa yung mga... <laughs> Sige po, i-invitahin kita sa committee ko, boss, ha? <laughs> Salamat, uh, Senator Robin. Attorney, po, oh, you want to say something? Uh, mag- uh, Mr. Chairman, mga kagalang-galang na senador, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, ang Pag-ibig Fund po ay sumusuporta po sa mga bills na naglalayo na magbigay ng gainful employment at decent work po sa ating mga manggagawa. Sa kasalukuyan po ang mga freelancers, mga self-employed at mga workers po sa informal economy ay covered na po ng Pag-ibig Fund. Uh, sa kasalukuyan po meron pang 14.6 million na mga miyembro po ang Pag-ibig Fund at uh, kung may sa batas po ang mga panukalang batas na ito ay uh, maladagdagan po ang mga miyembro. Okay, ulit, 14.6 million ang? Uh, miyembro po ng uh, Pag-ibig Fund po. Alright. Uh, po, kasama po doon yung mga nasa uh, self-employed at yung mga nasa other working groups po. So covered na po sila ni... Masama yung freelance workers? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, kung, uh, mag- so may statistics kayo kung ilan yung freelance workers? Wala. Uh, uh, in general. Uh, Masama po sila sa mga other working groups po, Mr. Chairman. Opo. Uh, sa bi- bilang miyembro po ng Pag-ibig Fund, ay uh, maaari po nila makapag-avail po ng mga uh, programa po ng Pag-ibig Fund gaya ng uh, shorter loan at saka housing loan po. Uh, ngay- ngayon po, uh, Mr. Chairman, dito po sa ating uh, batas ay eh, meron pong provision dun sa Section 9 uh, regarding po dun sa collateral free na uh, financial services. Uh, bilang pong uh, fit government financial institution, uh, ang pag-ibig fund po ay, ay uh, uh, provident savings fund po at uh, na, uh, na privado in character at ito po ay buong-buong pag-aari po ng mga membro ang pagbibigay po ng uh, collateral free loans po ay uh, hindi po naayon po sa mandato ni Pag-ibig Fund kasi po uh, required po Mr. Chairman ang pagbibigay po ng mga loans po ay base po sa capacity to pay at ang mga pag-invest po ng pera po ay dapat ay by due and prudent regard po sa safety growth and liquidity, Mr. Chairman. Uh, minumukay po ng Pag-ibig Fund na uh, sana po ay uh, ma- ma- matanggal po yung uh, provision na collateral free po. Uh, kasi po, uh, required po uh, bilang isang uh, government financial institution na, na tinitignan po ng ating Commission on Audit na ang pagbib- paglalabas po ng, at- ng pera, um, uh, um, ito po ay loan o kaya naman po uh, multi-purpose loan or housing loan ay dapat po ay based po sa capacity to pay at meron pong uh, uh, collateral po uh, sa pagbibigay ng loans para po mayroong kasiruguduhan ang ating gobyerno na maka-recover po in case po na hindi makabayad po ang uh, uh, ang miyembro po. Pero yun nga, uh, sa, sa lukuyan po, Mr. Chairman, uh, ang mga miyembro po, ang mga nasa freelancers, uh, self-employed, at dun sa mga uh, sa other working groups, ay makapag, nakakapag-avail na po, mag, pwede po sila maging miyembro at makapag-avail po ng mga programa po ng Pag-ibig Fund. Uh, we have, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, nakapag-submit na rin po kami ng aming position paper uh, last, uh, last week po, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Chair, if I may, just a very quick, uh, very quick intervention. First of all, Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, state on the record yung binabanggit ni Attorney Po. It's a welcome development and this is the reason why we're calling for a committee hearing. Uh, hindi perfect yung mga pinafile natin na bills. We are ready to debate and uh, talk about it. Uh, maganda ho yung suggestion ninyo about the collateral. Siguro naisip ko lang, Mr. Chairman, pwede rin yung... Uh, I remember when I was in TESDA, we were trying to uh, uh, encourage yung uh, land bank and other uh, GFIs na, na gamitin yung, for example, yung national certification nila. Kung sila ay graduate, for example, ng uh, small engine repair at mangungutang sila ng 10,000, 5,000, pwede nilang gamitin na ito. Meron ako talagang pinag-aralan at kaya kong uh, uh, punan itong uh, yung mga soft loans, no? yung mga maliliit na na utang. But uh, having said that, no, binanggit nyo kanina, attorney po, no, because at present, based on the data I have here with me from the SSS as of April 2021, there are 5.03 million voluntary paying members. Tapos, 3.35 million self-employed members. Uh, assuming that this include informal workers, eh, kung Kukumpara ho natin dun sa estimated 16.7 million informal workers, eh, malayo pa din po. No? So yung, yung siguro yung question ko lang na i uh, sir, yung uh, uh, how can government can actually uh, reach out to workers in the uh, informal sector to encourage them to register and uh, regularly uh, pay contributions to SSS, Will Health, and uh, Pag-ibig? Ano, ano ho yung views nyo dito, sir? Uh, ma ma maganda nga, uh, uh, Mr. And perhaps one last, no? Perhaps if we can, uh, I don't know, no? Is there a way to somehow uh, simplify and streamline itong uh, uh, proseso to encourage them, uh, encourage our workers to register? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before he yes. responds, may, 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 please, please. may I suggest that uh, he be brief and concise. Kaya ba kong gawin ito? Hindi. Yeah. Baka parehong sagot nyo ng dole, no? napakahirap trabaho ito. Paano mo sisingilin yung mga... <laughs> kaya ba ho yan? Mr. Chairman po, uh, kaya, kaya po. Uh, sabi ko nga po, ay, may, uh, mga po mga nasa freelancers, mga self-employed at other working groups, ay maaari na po na, ma, uh, na mag, ma, maging miyembro ng Pag-ibig Fund. Nasa, nasa natin po, Mr. Chairman, sa Implementing Rules and Regulations ng RA 9679, ang mga, ang mga self-employed po, specific po doon, ang mga self-employed, na meron pong akita na 1,000 pesos at pataas na hindi pa po umaabot ng 60 years old, ay pwede po maging miyembro ng Pag-ibig Fund. So, ito pong buhil na pag naisa batas, ay mag mag magkakaroon ng pag uh, pagbibigay ng pagkakataon sa adip sa mga iba po pong miyembro na hindi pa po nakakocover. Ma-encourage po sila na mag-miyembro uh, po ng Pag-ibig Fund, mag-save po para either po sa uh, provident savings o kaya po for housing para po sa kanilang uh, ikabubuti, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regarding naman po, Mr. Chairman, sa tanong po ni, uh, ni uh, Senator Villanueva po, sa Pag-ibig Fund po, meron po kaming other working groups department po. At ang uh, OWG department po ay nakikipagtulungan po sa mga uh, asosasyon, sa mga other working groups para po ma-encourage po yung mga miyembro po nila, yung mga tricycle associations, yung mga TODA, yung mga... Uh, yung mga po yung mga nasa transportation yung uh, uh, actually na pati po sa IR nakalagay po mga uh, mga washer car boys lahat po uh, kung covered po sila ni SSS ni GSIS at uh, mga nasa other working groups pwede po sila maging miyembro so kung ka po kami po uh, sa pag-ibig fund kami po yung nagre-reach out sa mga asosasyon para po mahikayat po yung mga miyembro po nila kami na po yung nagbidadala po ng mga uh, mga forms para po magre makapag-register po sila. Uh, ito po yung uh, tinatouch base po namin sila sa mga um, branches po ng Pag-ibig Fund para po uh, makapag-register, makapag-remit at pagka po nakapag-register na po sila uh, via po the virtual Pag-ibig. Pwede po nila ma-check yung mga contributions po nila kagad. Uh, pwede rin po silang, uh, hindi lang po limited po yun doon sa mandatory contributions na 100-100. Pwede po sila, Mr. Chairman, mag-upgrade po either po doon sa uh, Ibig 1, uh, o kaya naman po doon sa modified pag-ibig 2 na nabibigay po ng mas mataas po na uh, interest po uh, para makapag-impok po sila, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, I, I agree with Attorney Po. When I was Chairman of the Senate Committee on Housing, I found out that pag-ibig is one of the best-run government agencies, organizations that we have. So congratulations sa inyo, Emma. Talagang ano kayo, talagang tama yung sinabi nyo, na kaya nyo yun. 
kaya niyang gawin niya. And I think that that would even apply to overseas uh, workers. You, you, you can reach out to them online or what? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, meron po, pati rin nga po yung sa mga, uh, sa mga overseas Filipinos po. Uh, Nakikipag-touch base po kami doon sa mga association po sa mga iba-ibang bansa, yung mga, fil o, mga Filipino communities po. At sa kasalukayan po, meron po nga po kami mga uh, virtual offices para po matulungan. Kasi nga po, Uh, yung mga nasa ibang basa, sa Europa, sa Amerika, iba po yung time zone nila. So, kapag ka po meron po silang mga katanungan, sa, for example, sa housing loan po, eh, pag nag-contact po sila sa call center natin sa Pilipinas, kung ba po yung time zone. So, kung baga po nagawa po kami ng mga virtual offices, uh, kasalukuyan po, meron po sa Europa, sa, Amer sa North America, Uh, pa pa para po sa ating mga Filipino uh, Filipinos na nandun po sa ibang bansa na makapag-avail, makapag-register, makapag-impok po sa pag-ibig fund. Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, yung last lang, no? yung doon sa informal sector, attorney po, for example, mga tricycle drivers, uh, isang libo, dalawang libo, uh, how do you encourage them na mag-contribute? Kasi voluntary po ito, eh, di ba? Uh, on their part. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Actually, uh, nakalagay pa nga po doon sa IRR po namin at mga cigarette vendors, watcher carboys, yun nga po. Kasi po, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, sa kasalukuyan, yung pag-ibig fund po, mandatory, yung mandatory savings po niya, 100-100 po yung employer counterpart. Uh, employer and employee, 100-100 po. Mula po ng 1980s, yan na po yung rate po. Yes. Uh, so, in, pagka po, uh, uh, sa maliit na halaga po, uh, over the years, yung, yung savings po nila, dahil compounded po, naka, lumalaki po yun. At yun nga po, marami rin po, eh, nag, nag, uh, nag, uh, nagsisave, hindi lang po yung mandatory 100, pero nag-upgrade po sila, Mr. Chairman, doon sa pag-ibig 1, o kaya naman po doon sa modified pag-ibig 2. Yung, 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 yun nga, eh, take, let's take that for an example, a tricycle driver or a cigarette vendor. How much do they have to... Uh... A lot. And uh, I mean, how do you encourage them? Because this is voluntary. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, pwede po. Yung doon sa pag-ibig one po, so kumbaga pwede pong in, in addition sa 100-100, magdagdag lang po ng, ng konti po, pwede po yun. Pwede naman pa. So, what what amount are we talking about it? And how do you reach out to them? Na, oy, uh, voluntary, you can actually be part of our, ano, uh, of this uh, group. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Actually po, yung mag, uh, sabi nga po, meron po kang other working groups department at sila po yung mga nakikipag-touch base sa mga associ associations, sa mga TODA. Uh, sila na po yung, nag, uh, for example po, merong request po, for example, isang association, uh, isang meron silang convention. So, uh, si Pag-ibig Fan na po, ang pupunta po doon, uh, pwede pong magdadala na po si Pag-ibig Fan ng mga forms, online registration, tutulangan po sila. So, pwede rin naman po during but, that but event. But key po dyan, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but key po dyan is how you You, you you motivate them na, uy, sustain nyo itong contribution. Yes, Kasi yes, maaaring one time, but then afterwards, parang wala na, tatama rin na yan, hindi na magko-contribute. Uh, that's a, a great challenge, no? Uh, and how do you do that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually po, yun nga po, sabi ko nga po, meron po tayong, uh, for example, do sa virtual pag-ibig po. So, uh, pag nag-register po sila, makikita po lang, sa, mag, pwede po nilang i-download yung app ng pag-ibig fund. Makikita po kagad nila doon, on real time, yung mga savings po nila. Makikita po nila doon yung dividendo na, maki, na kinikredit po sa kanila. So, kumbaga, yung mga employee, employees po natin, pwede rin po nilang i-check. So, tama yung mga employers ba namin, nagre-remit ba? So, pwede lang makita virtually, online, yung records po nila, ma-check po nila na yung mga kanilang mga uh, employer, employer kung sa, sa formally employed sector o kaya naman po sa self-employed. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, siguro yung one last point ko na lang na para to not to belabor the issue. Perhaps yung, yung, yung mga nasa informal se sector na binabanggit natin, the uh, cigarette vendor, baka wala silang uh, online na uh, connection para ma-check nila yan. Siguro yung, yung mga ganun, dapat mabigyan natin na, na manually, masulatan o masabihan sila na oh, ito, to encourage them. No? Kasi that's, that's very challenging. I know it's, it's not It's, it's easier said than done, but I think it's very important. Kasi kung hindi natin sila masustain, yeah, one time makakapagbigay sila. Second, pwede siguro, but to sustain the contribution, yun ang big challenge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel. Thank you, Attorney Po. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Tagdag wala po, yung po po mga miyembro po, pwede po sila pumunta po sa mga branches po ni Pag-ibig Fund, sa lahat po ng syudad, uh, probinsya po, meron po si Pag-ibig Fund. Kung, wala po, kung hindi po nila ma-check uh, online, kung wala po silang uh, 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 smartphone o kaya po internet connection, pwede po sa uh, any Pag-ibig branch, pwede po nilang ma-check. 
At nga po, pwede yung sa pag-check po nila, makikita po nila yung savings po nila. So, kumbaga po, pag nakikita po nila na lumalak go, lumalaki po yung kanilang uh, savings po at uh, na, na government guaranteed, ay maingan niyo po sila na makapag-save po. At uh, for example nga po, makapag-avail pa po sila ng mga housing loan programs. For example po, sa mga membro, so may affordable housing sa mga minimum wage earners, pwede po silang uh, makapag-avail. So, yun po incentive. Nakikita po nila na magag magagamit nila yung savings nila, magamit po yung beneficyo bilang membro ng Pag-ibig Fund. Okay, for the benefit of our viewers, how many brand, how many pagibig branches do you have? Uh, Mr. Chairman, at, at present, uh, we have branches in all uh, cities and provinces of uh, in in uh, key cities. Key cities, all all all, all? Key city, all key cities, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have big, we have housing, we have uh, business centers, we have big branches, small branches, and medium branches. Kaya sa malilit po, meron po kami mga service desk. Uh, nakikipagtaya po kami sa lahat po. So, uh, halos lahat po ng, uh, uh, ano po, ng uh, cities and provinces, uh, pag Mr. Chairman po, merong presence po si Pag-ibig Fund. Dito sa Metro Manila? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes po, Mr. Chairman, uh, north, south, east, west of NCR, marami pong branches si Pag-ibig Fund. Hmm. Doon sa Mandalo yan? Sa... Uh, yes po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ang, actually po, ang housing po ni Pag-ibig Fund, nandun po sa Shaw Boulevard, sa Mandalo yung po. Uh... Property. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, anyway, thank you for all your uh, insights and uh, recommendations with regard to uh, this uh, particular bill. And uh, the second bill that we're supposed to discuss is the Magna Carta for workers in the informal economy. Since uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, questions are being asked, with regard to nagkakaroon ng uh, in intertwining no nasasama na rin itong uh, itong uh, Magna Carta for Workers in the Informal Economy siguro uh, I would like to request the uh, resource persons concerned kung pwede nila kayo mag-submit ng uh, position paper with regard to the Magna Carta for Workers in the Informal Economy okay lang po sa inyo yan? or do you have any yes, inputs sir. or uh, suggestions we will just submit uh, our position paper. Before we tackle the bill of uh, Senator Francis. Yes, Mr. Bustillas. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Po. This is a very quick input lang po. Uh, of, of the four bills na na-file po, uh, I think we would like to request the Honorable Committee po to consider uh, another section uh, creating a Joint Congressional Oversight Committee that would monitor and review the implementation of this act. Kasi sir, uh, Senator uh, Jingoy, masyado pong malaki yung sakop nitong uh, uh, Magna Carta of the uh, Magna Carta of the Workers uh, Magna Carta of Workers in the Informal Economy and there are a lot of agencies involved. So, siyempre sa implementation po ng kada agency. Wala akong naka-attach na mga annex dito sa kay Jeff, no? Uh, <laughs> Sige lang po. Yes, okay. uh, yes po. Uh, marami po mga agencies na naka-attach po dito sa uh, Magna Carta and I think uh, yung, implement, yung implementation po nito should be harmonized. Eventually po, nasa discretion po naman ng committee uh, kung Anong panahon po pwedeng magkaroon ng pag-review ng implementation? Pa so you are suggesting that we uh, have an oversight committee? Yes, sir. Doon po sa propose. Uh, actually, nasa position paper po siya ng NAPSI mm -hmm. na we would like to manifest our uh, proposal to this committee to please consider. To, to create a congressional oversight committee? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only with regard to this the, particular bill. Yes, sir. The Magna Carta for the mm -hmm. uh, informal workers, sir. And and lastly, sir, uh, of course, napaka-importante po nung, ano, nung transition to formal economy, but there are other forms para po yung mga informal workers ay makalagpas po dun sa poverty. And uh, nabanggit po kasi dito yung mga MSMEs, including cooperatives. So, Probably, uh, uh, Mr. Senator, Mr. Chair, uh, the promotion of cooperatives is also important in the uh, transition and protection of the informal economy. Po.
Thank you very much. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Bustillos. Any other uh, guests who wishes to provide some inputs before we tackle the bill of uh, Senator Francis? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I am ready. Yes. Who is wishing? Uh, so Chair. Uh, Atin. Please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, this is Monica Atin. This is. Sabay, sabay. Uh, this is Mon Ibrahim of Atin. Okay. Okay. No, I just yes, would like, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, I just would like, going back to the uh, Freelancers Protection Act, uh, I just would like to manifest my observation na pinag-uusapan natin dito yung mga digital freelancers natin, but they're not actually represented in this hearing. They have, uh, I can actually, I know of three national organizations uh, representing the millions of uh, online freelancers uh, in the Philippines, uh, pero hindi ko sila nakita dito. And I can help the ComSec uh, uh, get in touch with them. Yun lang po, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim. No, but uh, perhaps, Mr. Chairman, we can also get in touch with them because, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, just to put on record, uh, the uh, bill that we filed is the same bill that we uh, last Congress, and uh, it reflects also some of their uh, sentiments uh, given to this committee. But again, we are open to uh, suggestions. There's always room for improvement. We believe in that. And so we will uh, coordinate the community, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I suppose would coordinate with uh, Mr. Ibrahim and the, uh, uh, the uh, Association of uh, Digital Workers where we can uh, get uh, pertinent and important information uh, to protect our freelancers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel. Any other? Uh... Mr. Chair, this is Elizabeth Angshoko. May I, may I be recognized? Okay, please. Please proceed. Uh, salamat po. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, I, I represent the Magna Carta of the Informal Sector Alliance, and, and therefore... Uh, we have been trying to have this bill passed from the 13th Congress po. And, and uh, we hope, we were actually positively uh, uh, hoping because the chair called for this meeting early on and uh, we have time to discuss the bill. And, and therefore, Mr. Chair, we wish to manifest our, our uh, we wish to request that a separate meeting be held uh, to consider MACWI because this is an important, a very important and urgent measure that uh, that would help 40 million of our workers. Marami na po ngayon masyado yung in, inform, informal workers uh, kung mabibigyan po sana ng pagkakataon ang UP Solaire na magbigay ng kaunting salita tungkol sa gaano na kalaki ang, ang uh, informal workers ngayon ay uh, baka po sakali na ating madama na kailangan na kailangan po talaga na na mapasa ang ang makwi we were encouraged by by the chair calling for an early meeting on this bill and we have been working for many years to have this passed maraming salamat po yun lang po ang aking sasabihin thank you ma'am elizabeth yes we are going to give a chance to uh, the uh, representative of U up solar attorney uh, penamin velasco is uh, is he around Nang hapon, Mr. Chair, nandito po ako. Okay. Kung kanyang mamarapatin. Uh... Sige po. Ah, okay, sige po. Uh, ilang beses rin nabanggit kanina, ay, ano ba ang bilang ng uh, informal workers? Patay sa isang pag-aaral ng isang kasamahan ko sa UP Soler, nagkataon lang wala siya ngayon dahil uh, may katapat na conference ng statisticians ngayong araw. Pero ayon sa pag-aaral mula 2008 hanggang itong 2020 na estimates, halos uh, consistent na nasa 80% ng kabuang labor force ay matuturing nating workers in the informal economy. Minsan tataas, minsan bababa, pero ang normal ay nasa 80% ng labor force. Uh, anong ibig sabihin na 80%? Uh, yung pinakahuling data ng Philippine Statistics Authority July 2022 Labor Force Survey 50 million ang kabuang labor force. Ibig sabihin nitong 80% ay nasa 40 million ang mga informal workers. At nagko-contribute sila ng estimate, hindi bababa sa one-third ng kabuang GDP ng uh, Pilipinas. Okay. Uh, 
ang definition na ito ng informal worker, sila ay yung mga manggagawang hindi na cover ng labor protection, gaya ng uh, minimum wage. Kung hindi man hindi na cover ng social protection, uh, gaya ng uh, social security. Maaring sila ay nasa mga informal enterprises. Ito yung mga hindi registrado na mga empresa. Uh, halos karamihan, marami sa kanila ay mga micro na tinatawag natin or less than 10 workers. Pero kahit sa mga formal enterprises, ito yung registrado, bilang korporasyon, may tinatawag na books of account, meron pa ring substantial na bilang umaabot ng one-third uh, ang nasa informal ang katayuan. Sila ay mga manggagawa na nasa mga formal enterprises pero pwedeng walang employment contract. Hindi sila cover, hindi sila hinuhulugan ng uh, SSS uh, kung kaya't matuturing silang uh, informal sector pa rin. Uh, Karamihan ng mga informal sector, ang kanilang klase ng trabaho ay peace rate o kaya sila yung nasa seasonal worker kung tawagin o kaya yung tinatawag sa survey na elementary occupations o siguro pinakano na yung tinatawag na unskilled mga helpers sa factory or cleaners. Uh, karamihan ng ating informal workers ay nasa apat na uh, malalaking industriya, agrikultura domestic work, yung mga kasambahay, construction, transport. Sila yung mga industriya yung more than 90% ay makakategorya nating informal. Karamihan ng mga informal ay sila rin yung underemployed. Ibig sabihin, gusto nila ng dagdag na kita, dagdag na oras, dahil mas maliit yung kanilang kita, kaya gusto nila ng dagdag na trabaho. Karamihan ng ating informal workers ay mga kalalakihan, Pero malaking bilang din ng mga uh, informal workers ay kababaihan. Uh, panghuling punto na lang, ang makikita yung karamihan ng mga informal workers sa rural areas, kung saan mas mataas ang uh, antas ng kahirapan, kung saan mas marami yung nasa, namumuhay, ba, mas mababa sa poverty level. Mga lugar gaya ng ARM, Region 12, Region 10, sila rin yung may pinakamalaking bilang ng informal workers. Kung ikukumpara, pinakamaliit sa NCR, nasa 60% na lang, na siyang pinakamali, pinakamayamang rehiyon. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Sana makatulong. Uh, huli na lang pala, wala talagang, wala pang uh, survey na nasusukat yung bilang ng mga gig workers. Medyo may, <laughs> ano pa, kung ano ang definition ng gig workers at wala pang survey na nagagawa ukol dyan. Maraming salamat. Wait, Professor... Professor Velasco, nak nakapagsimpin na kayo ng position paper? Uh, hindi po hiwala yung School of Labor pero na nakapirma, sumusuporta kami dun sa grupong yeah. magkaisa, sa position paper ng magkaisa, yung advocates okay. ng Makui. Okay, thank pero you. Pero meron po kaming pinaabot na presentation para uh, in-email so maaring makadagdag dun sa ano, uh, inputs mm -hmm. para sa komite. All right. Salamat, salamat, uh, Professor. Meron pa bang gusto Mr. mag... Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. si Babes Tishore na uli ng Always. Yes, Mama Babes. Okay. So, sa pakikinig ko sa mga diskusyon, lalong, lalong, lalong nangangailangan ng pag-define o pagkilala. Ano, sino-sino nga ba yung informal sector? Kasi meron na tayong official definition dyan na nakabatay sa isang standard. So ito ay NECB Resolution number 52 series of uh, 15 series of 2002. Ano ang sino-sino nga ba yung informal economy? Mas malawak po siya kasi sa pag-aaral ng ilang taon, ang informal sector ay maraming nai-exclude na manggagawa. Kaya yung ILO Recommendation 202 nag-decide ang International Labor Conference na sasakupin na ang lahat ng nai-exclude na manggagawa from the informal sector kaya nagiging informal economy na. Sa sinasabi ko nga sa pinadala kong PowerPoint presentations, andyan yung meron na tayong standard. Uh, recommendation man siya. But this is the landmark standard for the informal economy which is the ILO Recommendation 204. At Itong, itong sinasabi kanina ni kasamang NAPSI Vice uh, Formal Labor ay hindi po yun, nais ko lang mag-manifest, na hindi yun ang posisyon ng buong NAPSI. 
kasi sila ay formal labor. Ang informal sector at ang iba katulad ng magkaisa, magkaisa kami dyan sa nagtatrabaho, dangan niya lang nitong pag-usag ng panahon ng ating ng ating mga konferensya ng mga standards, meron na kaming ang proposal ng NAPSI informal sector at saka ng always ay kung po pwede ay i-repackage natin ang presentation ng informal economy. Kasi sa haba na po, since 1999 po, sinug sinimula na yan kay Tita Bilya Flor Angara pa. In fact, yung the first Magna Carta na uh, department order ay si, Senator, ay si Secretary Laguisma din nag-order. Secretary na naman uli siya, wala pa rin nangyayari. So makita mo kung gaano kahaba. So, uh, no noong mga yung may mga bills na yung nagpasalamat kami kay Senator Villanueva kasi lumabas po yung committee report kaya lang po medyo bago yun yung IL recommendation 204 nakita namin na hindi pa talaga nakikita kung paano ito ipapatupad so ngayon nais namin para mas ma, mas maipa ano na ito kasi maraming provision sa mga bills on file ng iba't ibang senadora na na overtake na siya ng mga bagong batas. Marami na pong batas na nag-overtake noong mga provisions na inilagay diyan sa iba't ibang iba't ibang MACWI bills. So yun yung kailangan na tingnan uli at yung ano yung yung formalization ang proposal po namin ay repackage siya into number one, Focus lang talaga sa informal sector kasi ang informal sector ay hindi tao. Economic units siya. Ang manggagawa niya, yung operators na binabanggit na datos kanina sa NSO survey 2008, operators sila ang nabibilang doon. So ang needs ng informal sector, kat ang needs niyan ay papaano maka-access ng credit para lumago yung puhunan. Ang manggagawa ay iba rin ang needs. So sa informal economy, nandyan din yung informal economy workers in the private sector. Yung mga hindi nababayaran ng statutory benefits, ang dami lumutang niyang during the pandemia, hindi mabigyan ng programa sa SSS kasi hindi sinire-remit yung kanilang mga contributions. So ang classification sa kanila under ILO Recommendation 204 ay uh, informal economy in the private sector. Merong established employer-employer relationship. Pangalawa po, pangat pangatlo po ay yung informal economy in the public sector. Yun yun yung mga contract of service, mga job order, etc. Hindi rin nabibigyan ng tamang benepisyo. Kasi hindi sila covered ng labor laws kung hindi sa civil service. So kaya po iba-iba ang, ang proposal po namin ay i-repackage siya into books 1, 2, 3, 4 para klarong ma-identify ano ang batas na para sa kanila, ano ang kanilang mga needs na para sa kanila, ano ang kanilang mga social protection na kailangan. So ganun po yung proposal repackaging, hindi po na i-repackage lang siya at tinitingnan ko po ang nag-inspire sa akin ay yung green jobs. Ilang pages lang siya pero tinarbaho siya ng iba't ibang uh, technical working group. So yung sa formalization po, limang cluster yan. Number one, uh, yung business entry reform, isa yan sa mga balakid, bakit hindi makaangat ang, ang mga livelihood natin, ang mga maliliit na negosyante. Number two, cluster two ay, thematic cluster ay on social protection, protection at workplaces. Number three ay sa procurement. Number four ay yung sa financial, financial inclusion. At number five, ito yung access to training technology. So, ganun po nang tinitingnan namin ng repackaging para pag nag-IRR, lahat ng laman ng bill natin na nag-fall under that cluster, mandated yan sila, ay doon sila, sila ang gagawa ng IRR. Nang sa ganun ay mas mabilis, mas maraming nagtatrabaho, mas mabilis may pasa whether maquiman siya or whatever is the, ang, ang ititutulo. Uh, with the pleasure of the senators. So yung five thematic clusters po, dumaan na po ito ng mga proseso. In fact, para sa completed staff work, sinabmit ko po ang mga halimbawa. Ito yung mga kasama natin dito sa Dolly, like Atty. Karen, 
sa BWEC kasi sila ang naglead ang NEDA sila po yung naglead ng roll out niyan at makikita na yung mga halimbawa yung response na ng mga gobyerno ang dami pong responses na ng gobyerno doon sa mga thematic clusters na yan magkakaibang issues so yun lang po yung kanawagan na ma-align siya ma-realign siya according to the stand landmark standard so marami po akong pinadala ang mga mga attachments para mapag-aralan salamat po Maraming maraming salamat, uh, mga babes. Palagay ko, pwede na kayo sumali sa amin sa TWG dahil marami kayong mga mahalagang inputs na pwede natin incorporate dito sa mga uh, bills na na-file namin. Dahil sinabi niyo po, marami dito sa mga wordings dito sa bills namin ay eh, outdated na. Yes po. It was overtaken yes, by events. Yes, like Tama po sa SSS. Ano po? Like po sa SSS, yung ating new charter ng SSS, meron ng provision, I think it is section 9, instructing, tinanggap na po yung mga proposal ng magkaisa, ng amin, ng napsiwis, tinanggap na, na nakala, nakalagay na doon. Okay. The, the SSS. Mga babes, mga babes. Yes, yes po. Mag-submit na lang po kayo ng position paper meron ninyo. Po, meron na po. Meron na? Padala. Dito? Meron na. No. Ay, sige, isa. Pero uh, I would like to be a part po. Gusto kong sakyan yung sinabi mo to become a member of the TWG. We are very much pleased po for that invitation. Ayun naman, no? hindi kayo mabiro eh. <laughs> Hindi po kami magpapabiro kasi hirap na hirap na ang informal sector. Kasi basta kung pwede sasama namin kayo mga babes. Opo, opo, opo. opo. Thank you very much. The whole country will be happy for that. Okay. Sige, ilang taon na po kayo mga babes? Ako. Ilang taon na kayo mga babes? 67 na po. Ito lang ginagawa ko informal sector, wala nang iba. <laughs> wala ba kayo mga anak? Ah, meron po isa, pero professional na. Ah, okay. O sige, Mama Waves, kita tayo sa TWG. Opo, opo. Thank you ah? very much, Senator. Okay, salamat. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair. So, yes? Uh, maiksing maiksi lang po. Si Beth ang show ko po na magka- Opo, opo, opo. We, we already submitted our position paper together with uh, HomeNet Philippines, Patamaba, Partido Manggagawa, and Metro Manila Vendors Alliance po. However, uh, we did not consider the other bills on the gig economy, uh, which we think are very relevant in terms of uh, MACWI, primarily because sections 3 and 4 of the four bills of, of uh uh, in the Senate actually cover uh, these workers. And, and therefore, one, we wish to request uh, for us to be able to amend our position paper so that uh, we are able to consider the other bills. And second, Mr. Chair, really, kailangan kailangan po ng definition ng, uh, ng workers in the informal economy Primarily because nung nakita po natin sa pandemia, nagkagulo yung, yung pagbibigay ng ayuda at masyadong na-criticize ang gobyerno. Maraming mga politiko ang nagsabi na ang ayuda daw po, yung SAP, ay para sa mga informal workers. Yet, there was no definition, uh, legal definition in the Philippines. There is an ILO definition, but this is not legal and binding in the Philippines. And we need a law. We need a national standard so that all these things will be prevented. The UP Soler also manifested the enormity uh, of, of the numbers of uh, workers in the informal economy. And not only that, but the contributions of the workers in the informal economy. In 2018, it was estimated that one third of the country's GDP was contributed by the workers in the informal economy. We fully understand, Mr. Chair, now that we have the department for OFWs, we fully understand that they need a department so that their rights and welfare are protected. But the question in the minds of workers in the informal economy is, paano naman po kami? Kung mabibigyan po ng batas, kung magkakaroon po ng batas na matagal na matagal na naming tinatrabaho, ay totoo naman po makakatulong ito sa mga karapatan sa welfare at transitioning ng manggagawang informal into formal economy. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair.
Thank you, uh, Ma'am Elizabeth. No, and I can assure you that uh, we will work hand in hand uh, together. Tapos po natin itong mga bills na dididiscuss natin ngayon. Nakakasiguro po kayo, magtatrabaho po kami dito sa Senado. And by next year, magkakaroon na tayo ng bagong batas tungkol sa freelance at at Tutulong itong mga... Tutulong po kami, Mr. Chair. Very eager and willing. Gusto niyo po mag-member ng TWG? TWG din, na Ma'am Elizabeth. Member ang magkaisa uh, in, in cooperation during the time of uh, Senator Villanueva. Kami rin po yung nakikipagtulungan sa committee niya. Para uh, sa di, ito na kami rin po yung committee ko. Ah, Mr. Chair, alam niyo ano ako ah, laking San Juan ako. <laughs> <laughs> Tigasan ko yung San Juan. Nag, uh, pinaglabanan po. Corazon de Jesus, nag-aral ako sa pinaglabanan at saka sa munisip, munisipal. San Juan Municipal. Opo. Sino ba founder ng San Juan Municipal? Sino po? Ano po yan? Sino nagpatayo ng San Juan Municipal? Inyong tatay. Scholar po ako ni, jo ni uh, Mayor uh, Joseph Estrada nung high school. Sa totoo lang. Ay, ano man pala? San, san ka sa Corazon? Po? San ka sa, san ka, san ka sa Corazon? Sa Vicente Soto po. Hmm. Vision. Uh, okay. Sumama ka na sa amin, ha? Sige po. Tulong-tulong tayo dito. Okay? Salamat po. Salamat po. Sige. Senator Francis. Mr. Chairman, to abbreviate the proceedings, there was one professor who asked what, what is the meaning of gig economy. Gig, gig refers to a performance sa, sa mga artista. Gig refers to a recital. Gig refers to a concert. It, gig, gig refers to a short Term performance, your, your delivery uh, right there would uh, would would uh, do something for you. That's a short performance. So in all of this, including fitness training, coaching, freelance work, e-commerce, dropshipping, personal tutoring, yung po yung gig economy. Pero yung yung panukalang batas dito yung sa mga riders na nagdi-deliver. Mr. Chairman, to abbreviate the proceeding, since all of those uh, virtually present have yet to submit the position papers because they don't have yet a copy of the bill, uh, the hard copy, except for those uh, personal physically present here. I may suggest, Mr. Chair, that uh, they just be required to submit a yes. position paper after the committee secretariat have provided them the copy of the uh, Senate Bill 1257, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Francis. The uh, committee secretariat is... Uh is instructed to please provide our resource persons who are virtually present copies of the bill filed by uh, Senator Francis Tolentino, namely, which uh, is Senate Bill Number One Two Seven Five. Comsec. And uh, kapag na submit ng namin sa inyo ang uh, bill ni Senator. Francis Tolentino, pwede na ako kayo mag-submit ng inyong position paper dito sa sa committing to. And uh, siguro, uh, siguro, total naman nakarecess naman kami. Siguro, we'll give you time to uh, uh, study it over and present your position paper within two or three weeks time. Okay? And that is also applicable to those uh, physically present here. Okay ba sa Okay na? Sure. So, since uh, there are no other senators who wants to ask questions... I move to... My... Senator Joel. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Please. First of all, let, let me uh, take this opportunity to again commend and thank our uh, hard-working senator, Senator you know, Ingo Estrada. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel. And uh, therefore, I move to adjourn uh, this uh, committee hearing. Thank you. Thank you. you There's a motion to adjourn the hearing. Mabibs, maro pa kayo sasabihin? Uh, ano na po? Sa, sa, sa TWG na po. Kasi ando okay. na lahat na yung nasabi. Wala ko nag-object si Ma'am Bibs. Wala ko nag-object. Wala ko nag-object ko eh. Okay, salamat, salamat. Uh, uh, meeting is here by adjourn. Thank you po.